This is the Colonel Rad Alert. Civil defense information will be broadcast at 640. West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Y2K, how can we prepare? Stop a few of their machines and radios. Throw them into darkness for a few hours. We are fighting for our lives. My family must survive. Who for five years? Thousand gallons of gas, air filtration, water filtration. Coming at you from the frozen tundra that is East Central Alberta, Canada. Streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Rumble, and Odyssey. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. I am Toolman Tim. Today is July 29th, 2023, and this is episode 345 of the Workshop Podcast. How is everyone out there? This is a slightly different Saturday evening episode that we are doing, which is kind of fun. We uh, we took Friday, went to the city, picked up our girls, and we're going to have, uh, oh, well, in a moment, of course, I'm going to be joined by my better half, Mrs. Cook, who's hiding in the wings here. But uh, real quick, we'll get the announcements out of the way, and then we'll dive in, guys. I love having you here on a Saturday night. First off, since we didn't have a Friday night episode... Saturday night is here, and so we need to thank our sponsor, and that is Two Chicks Homestead, Aaron and Nate LeMaster, incredible people, uh, people that we call friends, fellow content creators who share their life, kind of dealing with uh, homeschooling and, how do I want to put this, working within the constraints of the rules that they have to live by, being able to raise their own rabbits. Recently, they've expanded their rabbit hutch. It's uh, quite impressive. Nate did that on the weekend. It looks really, really good. So give yourself some extra inspiration and add Two Chicks Homestead to your podcast feed. Also, Aaron right now, I believe, has a, uh, it's kind of late in the year, Comfrey. If you're looking to get started growing Comfrey, reach out to her and she'll hook you up with some. Number two, guys, patch of the month. I, Byron just told me tonight that he got this month's patch. I'm not going to unveil it until next week because I don't want to spoil it for the people waiting on it. But he did say that he liked last month's and he likes this month's even better. I was teasing it, but I was not building it up without a payoff. It This month's is, oh boy, I think it's my favorite patch or uh, definitely the most controversial and the most uh, fun patch that we've done so far. So, if you're looking at picking up some of these every, uh, so far, unless we decide to go with sort of some die cuts or something, there are two inch by three inch embroidered Velcro backed patch. So you can put it on everything. I'm getting to the point now where I've got my hat that uh, I put a patch on, my wallet I put my patch on, my shoulder bag, I have a laptop bag and a, um, a grab and go bag for when we go to hotels. Every bit of it's got a little hook and loop patch on it. So I put it on there. Hey, Andrea Snow. She said, hey, Tim and Becky, I'll bring her on in a minute. She's just hiding in the background. And finally, guys, we got, what, uh, two more days for the early bird pricing for Self-Reliance Festival, uh, an <laughs> event that both Becky and myself are going to be at. So if you guys are excited about meeting someone really important and you want to meet Mrs. Cook, I mean, not me, <laughs> then uh, get your tickets now because you save 20 bucks before the end of the day Monday. So with that, give me a moment here and we will bring on... Mrs. Cook, are we looking the right way? We are looking the right way. So how are you? I haven't seen you in ages. Where have you been? Give them a heads up. Sorry, okay. I have a cold. So Mrs. Cook is a trooper. She did not have to come on this evening. I didn't. Yeah, I should have given them the heads up already. Yeah. She's losing her voice, and she may need to periodically uh, stop to blow her nose, So, which <laughs> and is cough. and cough. <laughs> so we will do our best to mute it as is. So if you get a dead spot for some air right quick. She just, that means she just reached ahead. She wasn't cutting me off because I was about to say something controversial. She was just uh, being polite so she didn't blow her eardrum. So I told her she didn't have to come on and she said, yeah, but my fans will miss me. And I said, that's true. So here no, she I is. No, I didn't. She did. Okay. She's like, they, they, they're they just waiting for me to come on. So <laughs> ah, I love you, baby. You're an so, idiot. So we just had, uh, it was a good week, hey? It was. Yeah. I, I left on Wednesday. I headed south, picked up my mail, then headed north, went to Edmonton. And we spent, what, two nights in the city? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We, we picked up some uh, hobos at the airport. Yeah, our twins, Alice and Charlotte, are home. So uh, we were quite excited to see them, eh? Yeah. It was well, they were three weeks. Three weeks out east with the grandparents. And, you know, we're happy we can do it because 
when you move across country, like everybody probably knows it, uh, like anybody who's done it anyway, you, you really want your kids to be connected to where you come from, right? Or, or, mm -hmm. or you're, you know, you, you don't want them to be completely lost without their grandparents. So we've, we've done what we can the last couple of years and they had a hell of a time this time. And it's nice that they're old enough that they can fly by themselves. Oh too. yeah, absolutely. And of course they, they love to uh, send me pictures of my favorite pizza joint while they sit down and eat Ricardo's pizza. They didn't bring you home any either. No, I forgot to ask. And to be honest, by the time it gets, well, anyway, we're not really, mm -hmm. yeah, doing the whole pizza thing right now. So which is fine. And they love to send me pictures of my favorite seafood joints and rub it in and be like, Hey Dan, look what I got. And, but that's, that's exactly what I would do to them. So yeah. <laughs> how was your week, baby? It's good. Yeah. What'd you get done this week? We, we had a bit of a setback with the daycare, right? Uh, we did. I um, mean, it's not a setback. It's a sidestep, right? No, it's, I don't look at it as a side, as a, a step back. I just look at it as just another challenge. And, yeah. Um, the building that we were originally going to go with, well, originally originally building we decided to not to go with that because there's a lot of renovations involved there was a lot of renovations and the landlords wanted us to put in a huge amount of money into a building that we didn't we were just leasing we were and i wasn't that. fully comfortable with that so we went with another building and which was just required a tiny bit of renovations but unfortunately um there wasn't a big enough spot to have an outside playground. Right. So the town wouldn't, or the city wouldn't approve that. So then I reached out to our realtor and I said, listen, I said, I really want the first original building because it's bigger. It already had a fenced in area. It's, it's more in a residential area. So the city won't balk at it too much. Right. And he went back to the landlords and told them, uh, what we wanted, how much we were willing to invest and what we needed out of it. And actually they seem quite excited about it now. I, I'm excited so, it because it, it's a bit of work, but yeah. the it looks like, and I mean, we have other options. So it's not like we're out of options or anything. It's just a matter of picking the building, getting a building that works for us at the price that we're willing to pay. Exactly. Well, and the amount of money they wanted us to originally put into it if I was going to put that kind of money in, I'll just buy a building. Right. I'm not going to do it. It would have been plus a plus paid lease on top of that. Yeah, exactly. So they're really excited about us signing a five-year lease. And, and like, like the realtor said, it, it's going to be successful. So we're not going anywhere. Right. And once we get established, we're not going to up and just move. Right. So we could potentially be there for like 15 years, 20 years, who knows. Right. So, and the landlords were really stoked about that. And even if we even if we do kind of what we, we think about maybe down the road of building these businesses and then selling them off and kind of having yeah. that money to invest in something else eventually, that is still a successful business that's there. It's not it like is. we're leaving. And, and there's nothing saying that if we wanted to expand, there's nothing saying that we can't stay where in that building and then just go Open get another. a second one. Yeah, yeah, another building. And actually, when we were driving through Wainwright, I was eyeing a building up in there, too. Oh, you should have told me. Um, we could have stopped. I, I oh, was going no, to stop. we weren't in the same vehicle. Yeah. But <laughs> right. it, it but, was yeah. right by the tap house there, and it was for rent. Oh, yeah. And I was eyeing that one up. So I'm going to be Googling that one up later to see if what the possibility of uh, acquiring that building would be. Well, you are a go-getter, Mrs. Cook. I love you. You... We, you uh, yeah, you definitely bring out the best in me. Because... Well, Wainwright actually could use another center, which, so which would be which would make a triangle for us. So yeah. it would be our town would be down here. Lloyd would be basically straight north, and mm -hmm. Wainwright would be northwest. Mm -hmm. And they're all just kind of in this one-hour triangle. So it would it was doable, right? Oh, it, it, it's yeah. very doable. And Wainwright has the they only have the the two centers and they both have weight lists yeah. and they're smaller areas. It's not but... like we're going in and cutting people, somebody's throat or stepping oh, on geez, toes. No. We're, no. we're going in to expand the market that, that has a need. We're going to mm -hmm. serve the market. And yeah, yeah I'm so, excited. Um, and then once, well, I'm going to check Wayne right out, but um, I have my eye on a couple of buildings still in Edmonton too. So <laughs> I love you. But um, freaking awesome. But we got to get Lloyd bagged first. So. Right. I told you yeah. I was on a live stream with Nicole and John this week. Yes. And uh, Nicole messaged me and she said, <laughs> what do you want to talk about? And I said, well, uh, the big thing for us is the daycare. And I said, let's title it something along the lines of building our empire. And that's mm. what the hell we're doing. That's, that's what everybody should do. And the cool, and 
what I like about the idea of an empire, or, and and I use that word with quotation marks around it, is it, um, it the definition is different for everybody. Because really what it is, is building something that's yours that allows you to be more self-sufficient, right? Yeah. And Frig, that's what we're doing, isn't it? Let's us travel. We, we did the uh, the mobile studio thing this weekend, and that worked good. So we're making it work, eh? Yeah, just doing what we can. So we have yet another big pile of mailbag stuff to open, don't we? We do. Do you want to work through that first? We'll get that out of the way, and we'll try to describe to people... Um, for the audio, what, what, what we got, and yeah. uh, and then we're gonna go. So give you guys an idea. I mean, you guys got questions, you got topics you want us to talk about. You know, our our uh, Tim and Becky live streams are a lot more laid back with really no script, just a, an outline. But we got that, um, and we're talking about a few movies we watched, uh, some new <laughs> insurance that we uh, just signed up for. We're gonna talk about that a little bit. And if you guys have other suggestions, let me know. But uh, we love to be here and we will entertain mm. you for as long as Becky's voice holds up. Hey, or if they get tired of listening to me, oh, they don't get tired <laughs> of you. Not even a bit. So let me grab, we got a couple of different boxes here. So do you want to hold them? Okay. And let's see what we got. Um, okay. So some of this is stuff companies have sent me. Some of this is stuff that we ordered for Amazon prime day, right? Yes. Some of it is something somebody sent us and surprised us. So it's it's a bit of everything. We'll, we'll show you. And the reason we got some of it in here is because uh, we thought you might be you know, kind of tease some upcoming reviews and that sort of thing, right? So plus it'll let me make a mess on the floor. So we'll try to do this without any. So if you guys, this one's going to be a tough one to see. These lights suck. So that's a solder sucker. <laughs> I, I ordered this. So I, we the other night I had a request to, uh, to talk about repairing appliances, right? Yeah. And so part of repairing the stove is I need to finally teach myself how to solder circuit boards. Never done it. So first off, guys, the one thing I haven't bought yet is solder. So if somebody out there has a good recommendation for a solder for circuit boards on Amazon, let me know. I'll pick it up. But I got the um, soldering gun that Yozik rec recommended and I picked up a solder sucker. So now all I'm waiting for is the relay for the circuit board. And we are going to attempt to save $300 by spending $80 in equipment, learning a new skill, and putting in a $3.45 part. So to me, even if I came out at this at $300 cost, not that it's going to, but I'm going to learn a new skill. And that's what I love. That's my favorite thing. I, because once you've learned that, you know this, right? You get yeah. I get so geeky on this and she gets tired of listening to me. I always say I started this damn podcast so you didn't have to listen to me. And what do you do? Come down and listen to me. So that looks like a snot sucker for the little kids when they were little, you know. I'll grab me something else out of the grab bag there, Mrs. Cook. We'll see what we have. What do we got? Oh, okay. This was one you ordered, right? I think so. So this was one Becky wants to try out. We picked this up on <coughs> Prime Day. You probably can't. Man, this light is bad. We might have to turn. Did we? Yeah, anyway. So it is a, it's got a lightning port on the bottom. It's called a Link Pod 4. It's pink, of course. I don't know why she ordered pink, but no. Um, so it's a battery pack that fits right in the bottom of your iPhone, and you can carry it with it, right? Yes. I'm trying to find a... Well, see, and I, I got it because it's a lot lighter than those power banks. Right, and you don't need a wire either. Exactly, and if I want to go to a smaller purse, it would right. be easier for me to carry. So you're going to do a review on this? I'll try. Help me out with it, or I'll help you out with it or whatever? So yeah, um, for those who can see it, that's what it looks like. And it's just a kind of a compact battery bank that slides right up underneath. We haven't tried anything with this company yet, but like I said, it's called a Link Pod 4. We'll give it a shot. 4,500 milliamp hour battery. So that should give you about a 50%. I think about a 50% increase in your battery capacity. So cool. We'll try that. What do we got next there for us, baby? Oh, you want to tell us what this is? It's for the refrigerator. You want to? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, oh, okay. I, yeah. So you ordered this on Prime Day as well. Prime Day, yeah. This is USB rechargeable. I think so. Yep, yep. USB rechargeable. This is a an air quality filter for inside of your fridge. Kind of like a baking soda box. Yeah, so it gets yeah. rid of the smells. And is there yeah. something? Do you know if there's anything replaceable in it yet or not? Not sure. No. Okay. That's all right. So it's called an ozone air purifier. Maybe it's not a filter. It might be an ozone generator. Let's see. Air disinfectant and purifier. Dual deodorizer models, long-lasting battery, and food preservation. <laughs> I love how they write that. Well, so. but it, I 
it's a lot nicer than the bacon soda boxes. Right. So oh yeah. Well, you I knock them over. Sticks and, on the inside. So. Well, we'll give it a shot. And it yeah. it is it is made by a company called TriLink. So there's the new one. You'll definitely see some sort of review. I'm telling you, yeah. I'm gonna get you doing some of these eventually. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. So this was one you surprised. This is one I've had some requests <laughs> for for a while. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have followed me for a bit, you know I've got my choice for refillable butane barbecue lighter. Now, the other day, I thought I'd lost it. I went online to try to order a new one. And the one that I've recommended for many years with some weird made-up Chinese name has been discontinued. Of course it has. And I've had some requests. I think... Was it Rachel Brown or Tori? Somebody asked. I, it may not have been. It might have been somebody else. Asked for a recommendation on a USB rechargeable barbecue style lighter. So Mama Bear ordered a couple on Prime Day as well. And Amy has one of these. Amy has one of these as well. So this is also rechargeable? Or do we know? Be, yep. Yeah. Okay. And it is, yeah, one of those. Uh, it's like an see. arc one. Yeah. It's an arc. This one's a blue. It's a cooking or um, candle lighter. So we're going to test this guy. Out. Oh, yeah, there it is. What do we got? I, of course, it's USB micro, but that's fine because I'm a, whatever. But uh, let's we'll see if it has any battery in it for those. Sorry about the rattling for those on audio only. Huh, I don't know how to do it. All right. So we will. Anyway, we'll figure this out. That's okay. That's cool. Thank you, baby. Uh, Andrea Snow says that daycare expansion is so awesome. I'm so excited for you. I've gotten to the point where I need to set up a home visit on our end. Right. Kicking ass, Andrea. Isn't that awesome, babe? I, we're proud of you, Andrea. I, I don't know if I've asked if uh, you and Russ are going to be at SRF or not, but uh, for the, there is a ton of workshop people going to be at. I am, I'm yes. stoked. I cannot wait. We're going to have a meetup, and uh, I have a special piece of swag for everybody who shows up. And we meet up in person. So, um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm pretty excited about trying this because I'm always looking for, I, I get asked a lot, like, do you have a recommendation? And uh, Ryan Buford, you know, he's the king of USB devices. So, we will we will give this guy a go. Oh, maybe there's an on-off here. Let's see. I have no idea. There we go. There Look at that. Can you see that, guys? There it is. That's actually pretty cool. So, yeah. It has a, a pink arc or, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to try it out. So, Oh yeah, and uh, bluey, blue on the bottom. It kind of looks like a vape. It does. Well, when I seen it, I was like, "Why'd you order me two vapes?" You know, I can't vape with more than one pen at a time. No, I'm just kidding. Let me get it, baby. I can't get it. That's all right. We're good. I'm put that stuff back in the box. Or... Sure, the good prepper that I am. Traveling today, my knife is upstairs sitting on the shelf. So, just being honest, that's life, isn't it? So, yeah. There we go. <laughs> what a good night. We always have fun. There it is. For those on the audio, we knocked the camera over. So I always love seeing these bags come in the mail. This one is from John and Amanda Willis. Oh, I, I do not know what this shirt has brought. So here's the shirt. Let's open it up and we'll see. We'll check this out. And then, oh, it's soft too. The new SOE shirt this month says, it says Constitution on it we the people of the united states oh cool check that out it's got the entire constitution on the back for those who can't see there that's cool all right well we'll get we'll definitely wear i love these american shirts yeah he cracks me up <laughs> where'd you put right there okay so i love getting those shirts from john thank you john and i do my best to promote his stuff because i believe in it i carry a wallet uh, I just ordered a product that I'll show you from uh, SOE this week as well, which was, uh, I can't wait to try that out. Let's find another box here. Oh, that one's heavy. Yeah. There you go, hun. Vanna White. Yes. All right. So I'll uh, show you guys this one quick. I told you about this before. This is the anchor extension cord. It has the, the ball on the end. You just saw a review on it, but this is the 10 footer. So I thought it was time to up my game. I needed something just a little bit better, a little longer, because the five just doesn't quite cut it in a lot of uh, hotels. So we're going to try this one. I'll put the five in Becky's bag since we now have separate. And maybe next week we'll show them my grab-and-go bag. Yeah. Yeah. Worked out pretty good. Nice. Hey. Yours isn't as exciting as mine, though. Oh, no. The boys will like mine. Trust me. <laughs> So hold on, who, who's this from? You're opening oh, something so up here. I was, I was getting it ready. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Um, this is from Joel. Ah, Fortress K9. Byron Roberts says John has the best shirts. Yes, he does. 
I uh, absolutely love them. And sorry, uh, yeah, this is Fortress Joel. Joel, Joel. from Fortress K9 sent us a. Uh, um, we, I don't, oh, we don't... sent you a bunch of cards. Oh yeah, right on. Yes, then we can put those in with our patches. Okay. So we got some. Oh, those are beautiful. Joel was nice enough. So we've been trying to, <clears throat> in our community, circle through and send a bunch of uh, pat, um, business cards so we can send them out in uh, different people's uh, orders and that sort of thing. So you will definitely see some. Oh, there's some more. Pat, uh, some of Joel's cards coming out in the order. Ooh. And oh, is there? Oh. oh. You remembered my patches. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at this, guys. So we got a uh, a camo camo green, camo black, camo black fortress canine. Let's put that on so it gets rid of. Oh man! <laughs> oh, way too big. I gotta make it. Small. That's okay. Maybe switch with me. Uh, try that. There, let's try this. I don't know. That one seemed a little small on my head. There we go. Okay. That fits. Nope, still too big. <laughs> I don't ever wear it. There you go. But we can adjust it. So. Oh yeah. Thank you. Joel and Wendy, we had him on the show last Sunday night. They're they're friends. I look like a there we go. Let's see, I look like a drunk dude with my hat on crooked. But uh, yeah, thank you. We that means a lot. I appreciate it. We love these. I bet you Cheryl don't want to wear that too. She loves these patches. <laughs> That's nice. Nice uh, vinyl patch on the front of it. So thanks, Joel and Wendy. We'll yes. show them out and we'll send that along so they see it. What else we got in here, Darlin? I'm trying to get my hat. Oh, that's okay. These hats are. They're a good size. They're big, though. Yeah, which is good. That'll fit you. Know. Oh, there you go. Oh, look. You is looks... it crooked? Let me see. No, ah, you look no. cute. You always look cute. It looks crooked. Beautiful. It's because of the camera. There you go. Oh, okay. There you go. Yep. I don't okay. know what it really is, but so you had something you wanted to show. Oh, I, no, we already did. Sure I think that's a free gift. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at this, guys. There's a starfish in the box. So it's a free gift. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's what these are. Okay. So these are. So these are. Let me hold it up. They're called Puppy Mother's Pet Air Purifiers. I have no idea. Oh, is this you? Are they USB rechargeable? Yeah. Just in case uh, Pepper Dad Ryan Buford's listening. You can just open, you want to open the one? Yeah. Well, I got, I ordered three of them. Okay. And There's, what are they for, babe? You put them around the house and it's to purify, it's to you help think, with, with pet odor. Do you think they'll work? I don't know. From what I, the reviews I read on it says that they work really well. Okay. So... so. We will try it. You know what? These look. Oh, hey, USB C guys. Because <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm a geek for USB C. But so anyway, these look very similar in build to the um, mosquito. Yes. Uh, what? Are the, uh, I can't think of the name of the mosquito things right now. Thermocell. Looks very much like the thermocell. So we're gonna try this out. You will see. Maybe we'll just do a whole video on some of these USB <laughs> rechargeable gadgets. Is so, it? Is it powered up? Or uh, doesn't look like it. We're trying here, but. No, I think it yeah, needs to be. But you're supposed to, yeah. it's supposed to just purify the air. And from what I've read online and hey, from all the reviews, everyone says that they're supposed to be really good. You know what that sounds like? That sounds a lot like that dude that we know that says, everybody says the video, the, the movie's really good. Yeah, like good. you. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but hey, I took some of your review and I read the reviews. Yes, I'm I proud of you, it. Sweet Pea. So the next, this is really cool. So John Dowie, if you happen to be listening to this. Uh, if you guys remember, we did an auction a little while ago to support Jenny Hill. I believe just about all of the funds have made it to her now, which I hope anyway. And <coughs> we, one thing we did buy was some pretty cool uh, East Coast, I guess, New England products. Is that what we got? Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't even know what you order. I don't know what's in the box. I haven't even looked yet. Okay, so we've got uh, pure maple cream. Ooh, is that mixed? Oh, look at that. So... Not that we'll be eating this anytime soon, but uh, pure maple cream. The girls can try it. Oh, man. I got to. Yeah, anyway. You can take my word some. for it on the label there. See, there you go. There you go. Anyway. Okay. okay. What else we got? Barbecue sauce. Oh, yes. Uh, Big Pete's barbecue sauce. There are stories hidden from mankind. Things that are too incredible to be believed. <laughs> the history and creation of Big Pete's classic barbecue sauce <laughs> is one of those stories. Oh, boy. Well, whoever the hell Big Pete is. He thinks awfully highly of himself. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to call him Big Headed Pete. So that's good. Uh, apple cider mustard. Ooh. Oh, apple cider mustard. That sounds really freaking good. I like that a lot. Mm, All right. Pure maple syrup. Oh, yes. Not quite as good as the Canadian stuff, but we'll take it from John, John Dowie. So, sure. I'll pass. Yep. Yep. So it's maple syrup. All right. So that so. was that was cool. I was glad to get that. This was, um, I think there might be. Oh, yeah. Okay. This one here. This was the last package I ordered from John and Amanda from SOE Tactical. 
air, sorry, SOE special operations equipment. See what we can order. Open this up from guys. Imagine this. Trying to get into this. And you don't have a knife. I know. Isn't that awful? Patrick's listening. It's too bad that he doesn't have a knife. I, too bad I don't own two knives, to be honest. So yeah. isn't this something? I'm just pathetic tonight. But it's a good weekend. Yeah. Have, have, uh, Ed Celio, hey, at my job, we each keep an online shared document so the boss can check project status. It has a line for self-improvement when possible. I use SOE shirt <laughs> slogans. Right on. I love it. That's freaking incredible. Cool. So this is, yeah, you guys will see, this goes along with what we have here. So, yes. there you go, baby, hold on to that. It's in there, without, there we go. Ooh, we got some stickers, some cards, some Find Your Tribe. <laughs> All right. So, and this is going to go behind us. Yes, this is going to go behind us. This is, yeah, we won't open the whole thing, but this is a great big, what do they call it? A patch sheet or a patch a, blanket? A patch blanket. Yep. So we'll be able to put all of the patches we collect. It, it holds up nice. Exactly. Yes. Oh, look at that. There. Look what came out of that. Look at this, guys. So inside there, one of uh, the patch of the month cards showed up, which is awesome. We got, this is what community is all about. Evan from Radio Made Easy was in there. And John does all this. He just does. He doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? John's the one with the big audience. And he's like, hey. Send me cards and we'll send it out. Who's this one here? Oh, Chuck Peoples, Homestead Medical. This is like a who's who of self-reliance. I love it. I People, I cannot wait to see. Oh, who's this? Uh, we got, oh, Iridium Solutions, Ed from BC, fellow Canuck. And what else we got in here? We got, of course, SOE, Special Operations Equipment. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at that, guys. Self-Reliance Festival card yes. with a advertisement on it. And Dump Box. Hmm. I don't know Dump Box, if you guys are not familiar or familiar with them, but that is really cool. I love. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I got to get a few more cards from a few other people. So anybody who wants in on the, the card swap thing, let me know and we will do it. So that was, yeah. Oh, yeah. and one more. I think we can get this out of here, can't we? So this is the big one. This is one a company sent me for review, kind of, but if you can put it on your lap, yep. all right. So we'll show you what came in here first. So this is from All Powers. This is a power station or a solar generator for the people who uh, like that term. I don't like the term solar generator. I like the term power station. So here's your owner's manual. Just throw that right on the floor if you want, baby doll. Oh, so here is the bag. You guys get the unboxing, and uh, there's going to be a big review on this coming up. So if it's a product we that I like and I'm willing to do a good review on, um, there's going to be a 25% off coupon on this product. So that's yes. kind of cool. I was excited about that. I, I said, um, can you send me a coupon for the workshop community? And 25% off. So uh, solar cables. Oh, Guys, I like this design even better than the last one I had. Check this out. This is um, just a standard power supply cable that would fit into a normal uh, computer, that sort of thing. That's a check in its favor right there because I love universality. So back into the little, and it has a pouch, a little bag to hold everything. Yeah, I'll get it. Don't worry. This one's 600 watts. So they'll get a 25% coupon? If yeah, I I'm not remember this is just an unboxing. It's not a a review or an endorsement. <laughs> this is just showing you what companies have sent. So uh, let's see if we can do this. Twelve volt. It's got a twelve volt outlet on it. Has what do we got there? Uh, one ten outlet as well. Another one ten right there. Digital display on the front. Two USB Cs. Two USB As. Oh, and even yep, powered up even powered up this thing's heavy so this one has 600 watts with it the last one only had 500 uh so we're going to test it it's got a wireless power on the top uh what do we got more cords storage from the side so yeah look forward to an all powers power station review coming up in a little while now there'll be a review whether it's a good product or not and if it's a good product there will be a 25 percent off coupon to come along with it nice and if it's a bad product you guys will enjoy seeing me review a bad product. <laughs> but I'm pretty excited about it because I've read good things about that product. 
and we'll see. But it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. So it's kind of fun when we get this. Uh, Byron, oh, no. Oh, Byron says Dump Box has some great patches. Okay. We'll have to check them out. So you look cute in that hat. And here I am. Don't even have my boonie hat tonight either. Put so Joel's hat on. I, oh, yeah, I will after. It's a little small for my head, but it fits you. Yeah, but I got this great big melon that's about the size of three coconuts. So it's not his fault. I it's, just. It has a stretchy expander on the back of it. All right. Well, so do my pants, but they don't fit me either. So, <laughs> Jesus. And it's got extra Velcro for your big head. All right. Well, yes, it's fine. Look, there you go. How's that look? Is that, does go. that fit me? Yes. Is that yes. good? Okay. Yes. I just, I didn't want to insult Joel. And here you are forcing me to put a hat on. And I thought, oh, there we go. How's that? There. Looks beautiful. And it hides the glare. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> you know, I was hoping she'd lose her voice today, guys. And yet she's like, nope, I need to come on. My fit, you know, my audience awaits, right? So, no, I, I don't want you to lose your voice. I would feel bad. So, well, it no, just means like really. it gets a couple days at home. That's true. Yeah. So, so that was, uh, that's what we got this week. Um, as, <laughs> Byron says he has the same, yeah, same problem with hat sizes. I'm a seven and seven eights, an eight's a little big, and seven and three quarters is too tight. So I can feel it going like this as I'm sitting here. Okay, well, let, let's just, okay, so just for an example, no. it has an extender right here, plus an extra Velcro piece to make it bigger oh, it fits, for your big melon. It fits around my head, just not down on my head there you go there you go as i sit here talking it's like, no that's not bad there. and the wind will come and be, whoo, there it goes so <laughs> see there you go <laughs> it fits it looks no it, it doesn't it doesn't fit <laughs> does it keep going on <laughs> yeah i can't wear it it's okay you wear it and i'll give the other one to charlotte so this is what happens with me i told you hats but thank you joel i i love you brother and we'll spend lots of time together at prepper camp so that's why I have my like uh, the world's head. biggest head. No, I don't. Our son has the world's biggest head, and he'll he'll be the first to tell you. So we're not making fun of him, but uh, at least see he still has hair. So, speaking of the world's biggest, um, <laughs> what the hell are you love? Now she's going to turn red. I said, speaking of the world's biggest, where the hell did you think I was going with that one? Just no say, idea. yeah. I, I anyway, what I was going to say was. <laughs> Every time we go to the city, or not, sorry, I don't like to speak in absolutes. Quite often when we go to the city, Mrs. Cook is like, could we pick something up while we're there? <laughs> and I'm like, well, sure. What's this? She goes, it's nothing big. I promise. I said, okay. I, I, I know. And I, I, defense, I, I know. did not. I knew it was a bigger size. I did I, not know it was that big. <laughs> so so. Well, that's what she said. That's what she said. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> uh, the, the, the suspense is killing me. But uh, anyway. She said, um, could we pick this up while we're in the city? I'm, yeah, yeah, you know. I, and I owe you know you what? One. I did good because I asked before I committed. Yeah, you did. But so. but here's the deal. She still would have said yes anyway. So yeah. she said, honey, I want a treadmill. And I said, good, because I'd like one too, especially for the days that it's really shitty outside. And, you know, as soon as it gets cold, because the last thing you want to do is break your neck on ice outdoors, right? Yep. So we bought a treadmill. Um, I mean, we didn't pay for it till we went and picked it up, but it... Um, it was in somebody's walkout basement, which wasn't bad, but it was the world's largest. I, I believe that it uh, it comes in at, I, I you know, anyway, if it was on the periodic table of elements, it would be right next to lead. The thing <laughs> is like 743 kilograms, which is like 12,000 pounds in freedom <laughs> units. Uh, but the dude was there. So we were, uh, we had some help lined and up. And it had wheels. Yeah. Okay. It has yeah. wheels. It had wheels, but uh, so we had to pull it across his lawn. I had to back up into a field between two trees, which were way too narrow to pull it through. And, and, it, and the field was full of those like pricky briar. Oh yeah. Or whatever. So yeah. Anyway, so we go and pick it up on Friday night, yeah. which is fine, whatever. And then we had to strap it down on my truck, but it was too long to stay. It stuck out over the end of the tailgate. So we had to park at the hotel and everywhere else we went shopping with a friggin' uh, a, a disassembled treadmill on the back. And all I could think of was some goddamn crackheads coming along and trying to walk off with it for $3 worth of meth. But, but you remember what I said? Right. The With the weight of that thing, if they got that off the truck and took it, yes. they earned it. Absolutely. So more power to them. So my son came over, God bless his heart, because this old man can't lift like he used. No, I, I can still lift, but but we needed two of us. So he came over and gave me a hand, uh, easing it down the stairs. I I, uh, I was able to take all the parts off it, so we got most of it to the basement ahead of time. And then I planned out the route, 
and uh, we got it all the way in and we tied a, a ratchet strap to it and he lowered it down the stairs as I stood at the bottom, hoping <laughs> that it wouldn't crush me into, uh, you know, turn me into a quadriplegic. And we, we, we survived. Yeah. And just putting it out there, it now forever lives in the basement. Yes. It'll never leave. I mean, this basement. thing is, I, I don't, whatever. Okay. I, we, I think we need, I think I need a saying that is bigger than built like a brick shit house. <laughs> I have no idea. Like built like a fucking bomb shelter. I'm I don't not know, sure. but it, it forever will live in the basement. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Even if it like breaks down and stops working. <laughs> Chris Dixon says that his workshop is where treadmills come to die. I, <laughs> I will say there was about 20% of me who thought, can I talk Becky into keeping it in the workshop? And then I'm like, fuck, I don't want to have it in the workshop because then I'm always going to be complaining that it's in the workshop. So it's in the basement. It'll be a good spot for it. And yeah, we'll set up a really good spot for it. And this is where it will live. Forever. And we are going to commit to it not becoming a coat rack for at least three months. But you know so. what, though? With it being in the basement, it can't become a coat rack. No, it can become a blanket holder instead. <laughs> so that's cool. But yeah, no, I'm excited. We will. We, we've been anyway. Yeah we're, yeah, we're doing good. Let's just leave it at that. We're excited. Uh, I'm really excited about this because I used a couple of treadmills just like it at the hotels this weekend throughout this last week and they're uh yeah it's it's <laughs> it's sturdy it's gonna hold up to my yeah. ass i'll tell you that well so. and it's and it's a it's a stepping stone too because eventually if you know something ever happens to it i want to get one of those pelotons yeah that'd be cool yeah. well, but we we need to make sure that this coat rack will i, I mean this treadmill will use this time because we will i'm yeah. i'm joking because it's funny and it makes for good radio, well and but. charlotte wants to use it too because she wants to she does track i still so. don't know how she's going to practice hurdles on it but i, I could do it she you know? doesn't want to do hurdles <laughs> but she but she does hurdle like i could go down there with a yardstick and she could like jump over the yardstick while she's on the treadmill oh, could but you imagine ends up dying so going through the brick wall she's like so uh, anyway, Charlotte, how did you end up in an extended care home? Well, <laughs> it all started when I was 13 and my dad thought it'd be a great idea to, you know, where, where we only have three months of outdoor weather a year. And Chris Dixon says they make good laundry. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's right next to the washing machine. And when I occasionally pull out a comforter that's still a little damp, if there was one there, I might hang it on it. But we will use it. I, I joke, but yeah. I'm absolutely committed to it. And yeah, so <laughs> it was fun. It was good to get it home. Got it in one yeah. piece. We didn't break anything. Uh, Mackenzie and I didn't holler at each other like we normally would <laughs> if he were holding a flashlight for me and he questions the choices in life. And, yep. Uh, yeah. So we. So he has something to tell his therapist. <laughs> yes. Dad, I'm going to tell my therapist about this too. You know, I'm like yeah. I understand. I'm a dick. I get it. Cool. You yeah, tell my therapist that you hollered at me. <laughs> <laughs> so you signed us up for some insurance. I did. What What kind of I I think I knew it existed. But I didn't really know about it. And you're like, oh, honey, I want to surprise you, which is cool. So yeah. tell well, the people about what I you got. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, I can't I, remember. I can't but, right off. But what kind but, of insurance um, it is. And we can. Well, the, the yeah. town, our town has a like a really, really bad reputation for water lines. Yeah. Breaking. Almost always water lines. Not water, sewer. Or anyway. Not sewer. Yeah. Just water lines. And so they put out a monthly notice in with the water bill about this company in Ontario that's offering insurance for um, like basically your sewer line, your water line. Yeah. Like catastrophic yeah. water or sewer line breaks. And, that and it's actually thing. really reasonable and it's for the whole province of Alberta, but it's um, I insured uh, both our, well, all three of our properties and for them to have all the insurance, it was like, I think for, for each property, I think it's like $21 a month. Yeah. Yeah. So you're looking at about 60 bucks a month to insure three of them. Now, again, I have no, we, we, everyone knows that insurance is just like the casino. They wouldn't be in business if they didn't make money. They yeah. know the odds, but that's okay. We're cool with paying $60 a month to give us peace of mind on three separate properties yeah. because could not that it would happen, but could you imagine? And they almost always go in the, in the spring when the, the frost heaves and that sort of thing. You imagine like this one's good, but the other two, who knows how long they've been done. Imagine losing two of them at once. Yeah. That would be a hit on the pocket. Yeah. Well, I think the first one, like the, the one I was worried about the most was uh, Max Plus. Yeah. Because we don't know how long it's been since that's been done. But the insurance basically covers from the exterior of the house to where the town takes over. Right. 
So it basically covers everything the town. Oh yeah, I will. Uh, yep. yeah. They, Chris Dixon. I, yeah, I should have mentioned it to you, brother. Uh, yeah, I will. I'll send you all the information. Because... Well, yeah. And it's actually really affordable. And... It is. Yeah. And what we're running into here is from what I understand, this area of town, which happens to be the same area that our other rentals in and most of the water lines were put in in the fifties here. So <laughs> they've kind of exceeded their uh, life expectancy. And also it covers, um, if they dig up your lawn, it covers like the landscape. Yeah, rehabilitation of rehabilitation the landscape. Rehabilitation of yep. your shrubs and all that. So it, it's actually, their insurance covers all that too. Yeah, it was good. And so, it was, so it was yeah. sewer, sewer and water. Wasn't there something else it covered too, or was that it? Let me see if I can. Oh, it, uh, well, if you live in the country, it covers, it covered at least, the lines that ran from your house to your septic system as well. So that was yeah. kind of cool that, that that went that way. It's but, called, okay, so okay, it's called, it called? Uh, Service Line Warranties. Service Line Warranties out of, out of Ontario, right? I believe they're out of Ontario. Um, so it's exterior water service line coverage for $6.30. Exterior sewer septic line coverage for $8.10. And interior plumbing and drainage coverage for $9. Oh, so it covers if we have a sewer yeah. backup. Or so it's $23.40. There you go. So it covers oh. all that. And you can choose. So if you didn't want flooding in your basement or whatever. But that would have been that would have been nice for that rental we looked after for a while in Macklin. Yep. <laughs> when we had the sewer backed up and I had to clean it up, I could have hired someone else to do it. And yeah that's yeah. cool all right yeah you guys know i mean one of the tenets of what i teach around here is repairedness and what do we call it the art of home maintenance when help isn't around the corner even if it is and here's the deal uh, it, if you look at something and it's affordable and it works for you insurance is great peace of mind and whoever there are a few i, I don't know maybe they don't exist like they used to but you know uh jack on the survival podcast used to bust people's balls all the time for saying like you don't need AAA if you're a real prepper. Like shit, I don't. Of course I do. What well, we have a AMA, right? That's what ours is, or CAA, whatever it is. The uh, a roadside assistance. AMA. Yeah, yeah. Roadside assistance. Why wouldn't you? Because again, it gives you peace of mind, and you're kind of buying. You're, you're kind of leasing your preps up front, right, exactly. over a period and, of time. And I'm sure I got all the the addresses. We only got the paperwork today for one. Right. So I was just checking to see if. Uh, Make sure they got everything processed. So it might be something if 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 you're you know worried if you live in an area where you know uh, there's a good chance and and of course if you, if you don't live where the water where the ground freezes that often it's not nearly as big a problem. But I like the idea of the sewer backup and yeah. everything into the basement and the drainage coverage and stuff. That was really because that's... something else that's a problem around here is uh, roots and um, you know uh, well yeah just tree growth getting into sewer lines wrapping around it separating it and. Yeah. Well, for, I figured for $23 a month mm. and, you know, I thought it was worth it. I was really proud of you. Yeah. Surprised me or something simple. She's like, you're going to like this, honey. I'm like, yeah, you, yeah, you're right. But uh, Dixon, I'll send that to you after yeah, the show for sure. Definitely. Uh, so um, I had a little bit of time to kill in Edmonton the other day Yeah. before you showed up and <laughs> because you, you were working. That was fine. We knew that. And I, yeah. I made the trip quicker than I thought I would. And so I went and checked out the old edmonton civil defense <coughs> shelter so it was it wasn't a bomb shelter i posted a couple pictures in the telegram group i will post more but if you're listening to this and you're interested come by the telegram group and i'll post some more stuff but obviously i couldn't get into it because it's it, it's got barbed wire fence around the top and the the emergency exit has it looked like maybe eighth inch steel i, I might have been quarter but i don't think so but they had it had it bolted on with 16 bolts not that i counted how many bolts there were you counted because you wanted to see how long it was going to take you to open it <laughs> hey one step closer how are you but yeah so anyway this I, I did some research on it. it's pretty cool it just looks like a normal i would say 10 by 10 uh poured cement shed above ground it's painted blue and white the old civil defense colors from around here but as you start looking closer you see oh there there's an air vent coming out of the ground another air vent coming out of the ground you could probably sneak your way through an air vent not my fat ass ain't fitting through oh, something I six inches. I know. Be. You can see where it looks like some teenagers maybe took a vent off the side. Because the thing about a fallout shelter is 
it doesn't have to be airtight or anything. It just needs to make right angles mm -hmm. so that because they were worried about irradiated dirt. So if 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 a bomb, for those who don't know, if, if a nuclear bomb is set off in the sky, you're going to have almost zero radiation. What followed is, is when they ignited right at the ground or just above the ground and all that dirt goes up in the air and the radioactive particles uh, or the radiation sticks to it. That's why uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima didn't have a lot of long-term. That's why people live there today because yeah. the radiation had a very quick half-life and it disappeared. But when it sticks to dirt, it takes quite a while for it to come down. So the idea was, I believe it was 70 or 80 of course, government officials, yeah. <laughs> emergency responders, they called it, were supposed to go underground there and wait for two weeks. They had enough supplies for around 70 to 80 officials. This was built in the 50s, decommissioned in the early 90s, sealed up in 2013, something like that. It's got over 2,000 square feet of living space underground. This little 100 square foot shed above is hiding, I believe it's three floors at 2,000 square feet down there. And it's a pretty incredible thing to see, the fact that it's still sitting there. I enjoyed it. I took a lot of footage from around the outside. They're actually upgrading a bunch of sewer lines behind it, uh, or um, I think it was sewer lines, that run across the river. So they've got everything fenced off, which sucks, because I could have got a little closer to see the front of it. You oh, know? I'm sure they'll be done soon. Oh, no, no. It said uh, 2024, so. Well, it's yeah, the I next summer. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. It was it was definitely neat. If anybody wants to check it out, you can literally put it into Google Maps and put in uh, Edmonton follow Edmonton Civil Defense Shelter, and it comes up on um, on the on Google Maps. So it was uh yeah, I enjoyed it. I knew it wouldn't necessarily be something you were interested in, but if I could have gone in, maybe. Oh yeah, I'd that would be awesome if they could rehabilitate it to turn it into some sort of museum or something. But you could see where they had a natural gas hookup to it many years ago. That's been disconnected. But all the original vents are still there. It was, uh, it was a cool time capsule. And the crazy thing is, it's like, I don't know, six blocks from a major highway. It's 20 feet, 30 feet from a major paved through fair. Like, it's right there. But it's just sitting there and completely ignored by almost everybody. It's in a corner, right on top of a hill going down into a valley. But it's, it shares a back alley with a neighborhood. So it's not like it's hidden, you know, but then the back entrance is right there in the woods. So it was, yeah, it was cool. I enjoyed getting to see it. And yeah, what'd you think of my uh, my new portable studio setup at the hotel? It wasn't too bad. Yeah, it worked better than expected, didn't it? Yeah, no, I thought it looked good. Chicken Hawk, if you guys know who he is, uh, you should check him out on YouTube because... Um, he's been he's been YouTubing for a long time, and he, he's pushing to get full time eventually. But he asked for kind of a, a review on the back. Martinson said, "Lost in plain sight." That's exactly what the uh, the the shelter is. It's just there. You know, it's background noise for just about everybody. But they've never been willing to tear it down, which is a bonus. You know, I would I just think I would be really nice if they would open it up or I, I would pay money to go down for a it'll tour. It'll probably be too much of a I know. Oh, liability. the government would be fucking, oh, we can't do this because somebody might die. Well, yeah. Well, in all fairness, mm -hmm. we are talking about Edmonton. That is true. Oh, yeah. We're talking about that idiot that even went in that art thing. Oh, true. So, like, okay. I wouldn't trust let's, any of them. Let's back it up. So, there's a highway in Edmonton and it's called the White Mud. Yes. I, I'm not sure where the name comes from, but whatever. It doesn't matter. As you're driving along, the first time we went to Edmonton many years ago, I'm like, what the hell is that thing? So, you know, those balls that you hang on, you know, you know, fancy like strings, postmodern kind of Christmas trees and stuff or, or like, OK, yeah. say you go to like some some Christmas shop where they're going to charge you eight thousand dollars for a Christmas tree <laughs> and all it has on it is silver decorations and all they are is these silver balls. Well, what this looks like is a stack of those, except it's friggin. 15 feet high and Give it's in the sh it's in the shape of a pyramid so they it's hired the dumbest looking thing they hired somebody at one point to do a piece of modern art to display on the side of a friggin highway like it makes no <laughs> sense you go by and it is the ugliest old thing and i didn't think uh it it, it would soon be a shooting gallery without police presence yeah <laughs> so I didn't even think you could fit inside, but some jackass slid themselves down between the balls mm -hmm. and had to be cut out with the jaws of life by the by the uh, fire department. So this this is the kind of people. I mean, but this is also the city that has most recently banned 
giving out any cutlery or anything. Oh, yeah, we should there... talk about that. We have a little bit, but yeah, we go yeah, ahead. So, so when you go through the drive throughs now at, you know, like McDonald's, Burger King or whatever, um, if you refuse to pay for a bag in Edmonton, they pass you out your food. We, just pass it out to you. Um, so we, we watched that this morning. Yeah, we were waiting so for coffee. So they'll just pass you your French fries. So meanwhile, while they're passing it out, they could hack on it. A bird could shit on it. I mean. Anything. They're just passing it out to you. And uh, if you don't want to pay for a bag. Yeah. And so, if you want cutlery, you so have to. They're charging, is it 15 or 25 cents for a goddamn so paper bag at the takeout so you know they they said they put that third window in at mcdonald's so that you could go there for when they screwed up your order and well hey it, up. it might help they're screwing up though yeah because as they're passing you out your burgers and stuff at what you'll be able to see what year well, we, we watched we were waiting for was it coffee or pop today pop, pop yeah we wait waiting for our, uh, diet cokes and we're watching the people in front of us get their order and they're they're taking it all loose and they're just like poof here's your fries boom here's your burger <laughs> boom here's your burger i'm thinking <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, it is just, <coughs> I swear we live in some sort of post apocalyptic And they won't give wasteland. you napkins. No. Or even, straws yeah. or cutlery. We, we did find, uh, we, we've gotten forks and knives made out of popsicle sticks, though, so those are quite impressive. Yeah. So thank God we're saving the turtles. But it's just Edmonton. Uh, I know. It's yeah, just it Edmonton. Like if you get on the outskirts of Edmonton, no problems. That's the beauty of uh, yeah. small town government. They, they know they can't repeal any laws from any higher up, so they just add them on. They're like, what can we do to feel important? I know. Let's charge people for a paper bag and let's make life just a little more miserable than it already is living in a fucking city. But I don't understand. The whole point of a paper bag is that it's recyclable. Sure. And most of these paper bags, like, well, for example, the one in England, it got wet and it just like disintegrated. disintegrated yeah. So it wasn't one of them. The one that transferred its ink to yeah. Charlotte's dress. Charlotte's $100 yeah. Zara dress that I bought her. It transferred the the ink from the paper bag to this it was a uh, an easter pink dress yeah. that we just bought her it was a hundred dollars from zara 100 pounds sorry from zara and um that's awfully heavy for a dress <laughs> and then the paper bag melted onto the dress so it was pink with all these big brown spots on it and we had to take it back to the store and we're like yeah this is from your bag and you know they went good on it but if we weren't near a store or anything, it would have, like, it would have destroyed it. Right. right. One step says, is that structure any sillier than the smaller Eiffel Tower with a cowboy hat on it in Paris, Texas? I don't know. So It's ridiculous. And it's, I think it was just, honestly, I think it was just a make work project that the government need to spend money on. Yeah. So in case anybody wants to see it, this is the man gets trapped in. Let's see if we can present. It's the dumbest looking thing. Screen. You guys need to see this. So I'm sorry for anybody on audio you're going to miss out <laughs> ever so slightly but uh once it wants to load up so here you go that is what is considered modern art of some sort or another uh you know when we first seen it i don't want to be i judge, remember looking at tim and i was like what in the hell, hell is what in that? sweet hell is that we we <laughs> thought that it was some sort of weird new age building supplies we, we thought they were doing some sort of work project yeah. and they had a bunch of this fucking material sitting around and we're like what would they be using that for i don't know i mean maybe it's a playground i don't know maybe it's a bunch of uh inflatable nope that is a bunch of steel balls or shiny balls on the i haven't seen that one the blue ring in calgary huh should we check this out while or, we're uh, here, what, what is the one in huendon the largest sunflower or something no no Uenden? no it's in um, cadogan uh no sorry uh Chauvin, and it's the world's largest softball okay no but there's one huendon is there? Yeah, I think it's the oh, I, I think it's the sunflower. I've never seen this, Chris. So if you guys want to see it, here it is. It looks like a giant rubber band or a uh what do you call it? Um a roller coaster that goes to nowhere. Blue ring artist surprised by reaction to installation. Really, really, you designed a giant blue ring that looks like uh, some I mean that looks like I, I'm just gonna say it. That looks like the elastic that's on a... Fr oh, I know what you're thinking, but it looks like an elastic on friggin' broccoli that I would throw out. So, well, we're going down this rabbit hole, folks, so we're going to look at the weirdest uh, local art installations. Go ahead, just say it. What do you what, what do you think? I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm thinking. In case about. anybody wonders, this looks like something that's a friendly... Oh, my God. What was that? 
I don't know. The friendly can... green giant would buy at an Adam and Eve store. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Did it break? It just broke that right off in there. Didn't Are you it? serious? I think so. Yeah. Oh, no. No, oh. it didn't. There we go. We'll, we'll fix the camera. So we just had a cocktail book fall down and hit us in the head. I don't know how uh, that fell. I don't either. That's weird. So we're going to change. There you go, baby. I don't know. We'll fix you up in a minute. The city played. Hey, Lady Lou. Great God, to have you. Chris knows what I'm talking about. Yep. All right. I don't know what happened there. We're going to turn you back on like this, baby. Okay. And we'll get you. There we go. So you, you get it adjusted. So did Chris say it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris said it looks like a C dash dash K ring. That's exactly what right? it looks That's like. That's what it looks like. And, he's, and, and, and <laughs> the best part of this story is that the artist was surprised by the reaction to his installation what so. reaction like reaction of like good or bad yeah okay so uh byron robert says i bet the artist was on mushrooms you're probably right and now i really need to look up the paris texas eiffel tower <laughs> let's see so it has a cowboy hat i've never seen this this is friggin' incredible <laughs> look at that i love it i've been on the fake fire uh um Eiffel Tower at uh, Vegas, but I've never seen this. Hey, Backwoods Butcher. Great to have. We have our local independent wrestler just showed up, guys. Um, he will be signing autographs at the local Circle K next week in support of uh, handicapped children. So it's great to see you here, brother. There it is. That is dumb. <laughs> that You know what? That doesn't look as nice as I thought it would. At least, I was hoping it would be sitting off on the side at least, you know, so... But yeah, that's something. Okay. Bring up a uh, Hugh Endon. I will. So I in case self-love. anybody wants, if you're on audio, this looks like a really, really poor facsimile of the Eiffel Tower with a red hat sitting on top that looks really like a skewer that you'd put into a hamburger to keep the pickle on. That's what it looks like to me. So boy, oh boy. Yeah. Hey, Joker Lees. How are you? Alberta? How is Alberta these days? Last few days has been smoke free, hasn't it? And it's actually, and the temperature has been really nice. Yes, that is true. Yeah, backwoods butcher he said, bit of a heel move, handicap them and support them. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, at least that way you're uh, creating a circular economy that supports itself. So that's great. <laughs> um, so what, what was the next one? We need to look up the giant eyeball in downtown Dallas. Okay. Look up my Huendon oh, one are, first. Are you sure there's yeah. something in Huendon? Huendon, giant sunflower. World's largest. No, that's just a sunflower. It's not even that big. No, I, Here, I, I believe. Look it, it up is. on your phone while I'm doing this. Okay. World's largest. You guys got to see this softball. So you ever hear when people say you need to check out the world's largest, whatever, and it's almost always a disappointment. Well, here it is. Where did we lose our screen? I think we lost our screen. So top screen. I need to show you guys that. Oh, you're really low there now, Mrs. Cook. I know because I, I can't. Fix I know. It. I, I'll, I'll fix it later, but we got you on there. So, who do we got in here? <laughs> the Golden Driller in Tulsa ranks up there, too. And uh, Byron Roberts says, Here in town is a whole park of weird sculptures. You know where else there were some weird sculptures? Hmm. When we stayed in uh, Omaha. Uh, what is it? What's Omaha, the city where we stayed there? Right, or Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, Omaha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We stayed in Omaha. That's right. The city. That is the city. So the over the uh, interstate <laughs> goes right. There's a big kind of interstate that goes over. There's this bridge with all this Game of Thrones looking sculptures on the. I don't know what it's for, but it's uh, rather odd looking. Didn't you think, hun? I'm trying to think um, what you're talking about. Yeah. What, remember when we stayed in Omaha? That's where. Uh, oh, by yeah. the at home place. Yeah, I remember and it was that. Like um, like a whole it looked like a whole bunch of swords and stuff. Yeah, I have no idea what it was. That's really weird. It'll take a minute for it to get you. Oh, yeah, it's right. buzzing again. We'll get you in, maybe. Maybe it's the hat. Let's try. <gasps> Leave my hat alone. Yep. All right. Well, I can't get the world's largest softball to show up. I was trying to get it to show up for you guys. So Letty Lou says Chicago has the Picasso and the Bean. Really? I didn't know that. Martinson says Flint a baddie float. <laughs> Let's see if I can pronounce this, guys. Flint a baddie floatin. In Flynn Flon, Manitoba. Try saying that six times fast. So why can't I get you to come back into... There yeah, right go. there. Brown-eyed Susan, the sunflower. But it's not the world's largest anything. It's just, a, it's just a little metal sunflower that they stole from somebody. <laughs> That's all it is. <coughs> <clears throat> Poor honey. Do you want, to, want me to move us to one camera, you think? Or does it matter? Can you get it to come in? All right. 
There we oh, go. There now you're back. All right. Donalda has the world's largest. Donalda has the world's largest oil, oil lamp. Isn't that special? Cool. These are all in Huendin. All right. The, which is near us, guys, in case you're wondering. It's so, the brown-eyed Susan sunflower. All right. So I'm going to show you guys the world's largest softball. So apparently Susie. The, the Her world's name's Susie. <laughs> Susie the softball. Yeah, that's actually kind of cute. So there it is. It was very disappointing the first time I saw it. It wasn't even that big. There it is. It, it It's advertised to six foot in diameter. I'm thinking if you got the world's largest something, I think it needs to be a little wider than six feet. But so there it is. The world's largest. Oh, let's show them this too. This this one is, this one looks like, all I can say is it looks like a torso of a woman. That's what I thought it was when I first saw it. So locally, you guys need to see this is hilarious. They play a game called Bones in Macklin, which is kind of cool. I've played it before, but it was originally made from horse bones where they would just stand a bunch of horse bones up and people would sit around drinking beer and throwing balls at horse bones or another, <laughs> a different color bone at the bones and knock them over. And it's become world famous in the little town of Macklin we live in. And this thing, we're next to where we live, sorry. And this thing is supposed to represent the little horse bone that they knock over, except it looks like an... It looks like a giant set of boobs. I, I think it... It looks like the yeah. leftovers from a serial killer. Well, I mean, like, it looks like it looks like the boobs. disembodied torso <laughs> of a female. And I think that's it has I'm... a door that you can actually go in it too. Uh, yeah, well, you know, you need to, that, that's for the gynecologist to inspect. I guess I have no idea. It blows my mind. So, yeah, it's hmm. the it's actually Joker Lee says, "Does Vagerville have the world's largest Ukrainian style Easter egg?" I think so. They yeah. probably do. Yeah. Man, uh, Backwood says there's a whole bunch of weird modern art in the park in my hometown. Now it's a tourist trap, so they have to pretty it up to hide the people who actually live there. Oh, yeah, I believe you. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, and Lundor has a giant goose. Austin's got a steam engine on a pedestal. Gladstone's got a funky rock with a top hat on it. Um, my hometown, not my hometown, this isn't one of those statues, but they have the balancing rock. Remember yeah. the balancing rock? So people will, people will hike in the woods for a half an hour to see a sliver of rock sitting on another rock. <laughs> and I've done it myself on at least three occasions. So, oh boy. So should we look up a couple more of these, hon? Mm -hmm. It should be fun. What did we find here? Uh, back a little further. And we got, uh, okay, there's the giant uh, sea ring, as Chris said. So we'll leave that alone. <laughs> well, at least he knew what I was yeah. talking about. The golden driller in Tulsa. Let's see what this looks like, guys. Golden Driller, Tulsa. Did anybody hear about the, I think it's in, going to be in Oklahoma, the new theme park? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually kind of yeah. excited about that. Dude, that guy looks really proud of whatever he's drilling. I really hope he has pants on because in this picture it doesn't look no, like No, he, he does. Has. It looks like he's got a belt. Okay. So here's the picture in case anybody wants to see it. Yeah, he's got pants on. Yeah. Why isn't that showing up over here? Well, the so. blue ring might work for him. Y you know what? The blue <laughs> ring would work for this dude. He looks uh, rather golden and... Uh, well, he has quite the chest on him, doesn't Does he? Doesn't Drumheller have that big dinosaur? Yeah, they that's do. That's not the world's can... biggest, though. I don't know. No. But you can walk up inside it and stand in its mouth and look over and it everybody. it is the dumbest looking thing ever. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Backwood said there's a steel sculpture of the guy who owns all the hotels and restaurants in the town. A bit on the nose. Boy, that is something, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Uh, Morden has dinosaurs. Look up the Ukrainian egg. Okay. World's largest Ukrainian egg. It's in Daggerville, I think. World's largest Ukrainian. Oh, man. I can't even tell. Easter egg. There it is. Egg. He's no big Tex. That's a giant talking cowboy at the State Fair of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> so is this it? Daggerville egg. I've never yeah. seen this before. Why does we just keep losing uh, the screen? Just keeps uh, stopping sharing here. So let's. Uh, Let's bring it back up. We'll share it again for you guys. Nope. Um, stop screen. Share screen. So, yeah, this is like a Fabergé egg or something, basically, isn't it? Or a Ukrainian-style egg. World's largest sausage. In <laughs> what? Chris Dixon, where's your mind tonight? <laughs> <laughs> the world's largest sausage in Mundare is going to go visit the world's largest ring in Calgary, Calgary and they're going to have a great time. So here we go. <laughs> there it is. That is the world's largest... This looks like something you would see in the it's Macy Day. It is pretty, pretty, but it looks yeah. like a Macy Day's Parade float, doesn't it? Yeah, but yeah. it is kind of pretty. At least it has nice colors. Oh, man. I, I really don't want this in my search history, guys, but here we go. <laughs> World's largest sausage. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my God. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I, I give up. I need something to drink tonight. What the hell is that? That looks like, oh guys, for anybody on the audio, that, that looks like something a dog would leave in your backyard. So there. Why would you even be proud of that? I, I don't know. I mean, it's the world's largest chunk of meat, I guess. Tim, no. So Tim, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Look at this guy. Oh my God. Look, this is, this is worth, this is the, it's fucking eye cancer. It's awful. So anybody who's watching, like, I can't even decide what, I mean, I know what it looks like, but it looks, I, I don't, oh, anyway, this is, fuck. this is awful. This is one of the worst I've ever seen in my life. And there's an ESO next door, so you can even stop for gas and refreshments. Wow. Chris Dixon, you're bad. This is fun, though. This so where, where is this? <laughs> I think it's for this. <laughs> oh, it looks like it should be right next door to the world's largest hot dog because it doesn't look like. Oh my god! This is it's a, a meat processing. <laughs> it's a the sauce. world's largest ring of meat. That's what it is. It's, it's a circle of meat. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh man, now we're in trouble. Oh Jesus, we're gonna get on some list somewhere. <laughs> I talked about a disembodied torso of a serial killer victim, and now we got the world's largest circle of meat. So, in case anybody wants to know, this 42 foot tall statue is a tribute to the meat processing, a sausage factory facing for its kibosh, famous for its kibosh, started in 1959. A father and son started, <laughs> started smoking meat. <laughs> That's what they called it. So a father, a father and son started smoking meat. Edward took over from his father, who must have been a proud papa at this point. Son, I got to tell you, I, I, I know I've been smoking my meat for a long time, but it's time I handed my meat over to you so you could smoke it for me. And now his daughter mixes all. The oh, stuff. that's it. Oh, geez. All right, we're done. Anybody? Okay, we're so gonna, we're gonna lose some subscribers tonight. So where's Mun 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 there? there somewhere in Alberta. Oh yeah. Lord. Oh boy. So you we're know what? We're trouble. going there so you can get a picture. I think we are. Yeah. Biggest meat. Oh man. The world's. I, yeah. I could could I stand right in the middle of the world's biggest meat so I'd have two slabs of the world's biggest meat on either side of me. And then you could like, like pretend to lick it or something. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, oh, why didn't they? No, just leave it alone, Tim. That's enough. Yeah, you can't beat their meat. I mean, that is definitely. <laughs> Um, there has to be the world's largest pierogi in Alberta somewhere. So <laughs> one step closer says, who needs monetization anyway? I was just more worried about everybody who uh, uh, would just leave. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, there, there's your mother. Oh. Um, world's, Provost needs the world's large, the world's biggest jacked up truck. <laughs> That's what we need, right? That's what we're famous for. I, I think we have enough so, of those. Yeah. World's biggest something or other. So. Maybe. Oh, in case anybody wanted to know, man, my jaw hurts now. Oh, Jesus. So we so have some arbitrage so we could do the world's biggest meat. I world's think largest should, slaughterhouse. You should make a bigger meat than that. <laughs> it's got to be, I mean, just make it 43 feet tall. Do you need, like, so I just need to ask, since we're talking about the world's largest meat, do, could we just go bigger in circumference? Because you know what? Well, right? I, I mean, no, I think it has to be taller. Don't they say the thicker the better. I don't, so I'm just saying. If you went 43 feet tall, okay, then you could like just do one great big huge slab of meat, <laughs> and it doesn't have to stand up straight. It could just be long. I was just, <laughs> I can't help it, but I, I just, uh, oh, anyway, they should have put like they should have put a background behind it if, if they had like, a, oh no, anyway. you, know, you should no, you should it like looked... just just start mix just make what do they make it at? Like, what's it made out of? Is it well? It was meat at one time. Now, it's, yeah. is it fiberglass? Or like, I, I, I don't. You know what? It does. I. I'm not sure. I want to look into it. I'll be like, what is the world's largest chunk of meat made out of? And uh, I, I don't know if I want to know the answer. So, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's better to not know what's in the wieners, right? But if you if you know what it's made out of, you could make a really long one. Mm, that is true. And then and then we could be. We could have the world's largest sausage in Provost. Well, Backwoods Butcher says he's handled a lot of sausage in his day, but that's a pretty big sausage. It, I mean, okay, am I wrong? But it, I just got to put it out there. Does it not somewhat resemble the female anatomy? You know what I mean? Kind of. That's what I'm... 
I'm uh, just saying that's maybe I'm there's something wrong with you. That's kind of what I see there. I'm like, maybe, and I, I, I think know. it looks like a giant dog turd, to be honest. Well, yeah, with you. you know, it does. So. Yeah, or it looks like, um, you know, when, when a clown shows up at a kid's party and makes party animals, it looks like when they've deflated it. three days later when your kid's tired of playing with the uh, the inflatable. Well, the thing is, the wiener Kibasa, dog Kibasa doesn't even know that he. Kibasa. You know what that honestly looks like? It really it looks like pepperettes is what it looks like. Yeah, but yeah. it's. Stupid. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking anyway. Oh. So how far are we from this? Um, we we must go explore. Well, do we need to measure it in um, freedom units or like uh, from from what I, I put it into Google Maps and it said we're exactly seven hundred and thirty equivalent world's largest pieces of meat away from it. So if you laid them down end on end, it would take <laughs> us seven hundred and thirty world's largest pieces of metal to get there. So oh. how far are we from Mundare? Mundare? I yeah. don't know. Google it on your phone. <laughs> Getting there. There it is. Health and safety. So apparently they have health and safety <laughs> warnings for going to the world's largest. Oh, oh you got to bring them up. What's the health and oh, safety? Oh, let's, let's see what the, the government of Alberta. Oh, what is this? It looks like a woman. Oh, it looks like, right here. Doesn't she look like a giant walking across the bridge? And then all of a sudden you scroll down. And you're like, oh, no, she's just normal. Okay. So we are just, we are two hours and 23 minutes from the world's largest sausage. Okay. We are going to go on a drive next Saturday. And I am going to get a picture of Tim with the world's largest sausage. Okay. All right. We can because do that. Oh, boy. We're going to go on a drive. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And it has a heart with it, too. Ooh, yeah. It's, yes. That's a heart and a piece of meat next to each other. So you guys tuned in to get high-quality prepper advice. It, is, yeah. it, is, it has veins. Oh, boy. Let's just uh, move on. What were we, we, you know what? I, I somehow I was about to talk about my really slick setup for a uh, studio, and then you're like, "Hey, guess what?" So, oh, oh, I, look! They even took it in the background with the shadow. <laughs> took something in the background. Oh my god! So this like is that supposed to be like fucking? Is it like artistic? I don't know. In, in case you're wondering, here's what our meat looks like when the sun goes down. Oh boy, use moose meat. Yeah. So Backwood says I always preach health Crazy and safety stuff. when I'm handling sausage in a park. A clown here, kids play with oh, my sausage. Oh boy, <laughs> caution sausage could be hot. Yeah. That's a spicy piece of meat. So yeah, we're as long as we don't have much going up, we're gonna go see the Letty Lou says Tim's next patch of the month. Him and the world's largest sausage. Like, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> Do you oh. like what they do on uh... sticks and says he's not even sorry one bit? <laughs> nope, not sorry. <laughs> Oh, I can't be Canadian. Oh boy. Yep. That was awesome. Jesus, man. That, that made my night. I really did not <coughs> expect to be talking about the world's largest chunk of meat with veins in it. So somebody out there is like, I thought this was a good, wholesome podcast. I'm like, and you said been, this was wholesome. Nobody ever thought this was whole. There was holes. Whoever in thought this was wholesome has got some problems. Some, we got some holes in some something here, I think. So do a lie from the largest. I will. I will. I will do a lie from the world's largest sausage just for you guys. And I will, we could do bets on how long it takes me to make a dick joke. So, oh man, that would be awesome. Yes. Coming live from the world's largest slab of meat. Living the dream, completely surrounded by meat. This is unreal. Boy, this is... All right. Stay tuned next week when Toolman Tim talks big meat. <laughs> Actually, that's tomorrow night when I'm surrounded. We're going to slap the meat around with three butchers. So it'll be you good. should bring this up when your butchers. Yeah, are I will. Actually, I'm going to. Don't. Um, I guess Josh will probably hear about this, but we, maybe we can surprise somebody. It'll be good. So, oh my God, that is hilarious. So, <laughs> shall we go back and talk about my? Can we go back and talk yes. about my studio? You think we can? Yes. Huh? Pitter patter. Let's get at her. Hey, hey, I love that. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Um. You showed up just before I went live, yeah. and I had this it set up, and it wasn't that bad, hey? I mean, it's no. basically just a tripod that holds a sheet up. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing that we found wrong with it is that um, it didn't fit in your suitcase. Yeah. So, it's fun, because we do have a pretty big suitcase, and... Uh, it would hold a lot of meat. It would hold a lot. Of, <laughs> here we go. We're not even drinking, guys. This is the beauty of it, so... <laughs> But yeah, so everything, you know, it's all about being portable so it can collapse and fit into tight spaces, <laughs> things like that. But I mean, it's a long, hard metal rod and it doesn't quite fit in my suitcase. So no. it sucks. Even on an angle, I can't, you know, you ever, <laughs> you ever heard the old saying, yeehaw, stick it in grandma if it don't fit, wiggle it a bit. So that's what I've heard. Anyway, so but I even wiggled it a bit and I couldn't get it into the suitcase and Becky's going to pass out. So yeah, so we, anyway, it's great. I just 
put it on top of the suitcase, but it worked. So for um, <laughs> Jeremy tough. just said, Tim has the best tangents on his live streams. <laughs> the, I, maybe we'll have to call it no holds barred or anything goes because this is just, it's fun. This is <laughs> not what the, this is not what the podcast started out as. And it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. And I think, I think here's my deal. I think sometimes we're too fucking serious. And I think yeah. it's, I think it's a lot of fun to, well, just so you know, this is what we talk about yes. when we're not on camera. <laughs> we always talk about stupid stuff like this. This is, you know, every so often I have to let my hair down and be funny. <laughs> so there's that, right? <laughs> but yeah, I, I know. anyway, but yeah, but it was good. I enjoyed it. It, yeah. it set up good because uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, like I said, Jeremy there from um, Chicken Hawk Farmstead. He he wanted to know all about it, and it was good, bud. Like you wouldn't want it. You wouldn't want to set it up outdoor. Because one strong gust of wind and that that fucker oh, would yeah. be three three doors down in the neighbor's <laughs> clothesline. Like it, yeah. But it's great indoor if you're doing it in a hotel or at somewhere where you don't want people to know that you're uh, uh, at at that moment, you know. But but it was good. It, it yeah. So between the the laptop that you picked me up and we just take our webcams and our um microphone. our microphone right with us so it's a pretty good setup i'm gonna have it down in the states with me the only thing i got thinking is on the nights that we do live streams together but apart you know yeah <laughs> i'm gonna have to get you a microphone because i'm gonna have that with me so oh yes we'll get you another one it'll be fun yeah I'll just order one sure yeah they're they're worth having or i'll order a better one and you can have this one if they make it i don't know whatever no nah, it's good well, maybe i'll take the better one and you can have this one yeah i don't think <laughs> yeah we'll see about that <laughs> So yeah, it was it was a good setup for for what he wanted to know. I don't know what else to tell you about it other than it, it worked good. It has four tiny, they're they're just like woodworking clamps. <laughs> Georgetown had a song in a neighbor's, in the neighbor's <laughs> Is that what it is? That's what you said. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> when guests are in a neighbor's fucking clothes. <laughs> Three doors down, yeah. <laughs> See, you can anything you want. I, I I don't know why people don't make more clips from these episodes because they're absolute fucking gold mines. So. <laughs> Oh, Chris Dixon, I agree with you, brother. Life is too short to be taken so seriously. Yeah, I was uh, I was on on a roll earlier today, and Charlotte showed up, and we got making jokes about Spirit Airline or or just cheap airlines in general. Spirit and, and Flair, Flair, yeah, they were so good. I recorded them so that I would have them because I think I'm going to use them <laughs> as material at Self Reliance Festival. They were some of the funniest frigging. Anyway, it was good. So I don't know what happened if I. I it must have, the meth hadn't worn off from last night. I guess I don't know, but it well, was great. Yeah, and. Uh... Uh, but speaking of, that's what Charlotte was telling me about uh, uh, Digby. I guess it's become quite a junkie town. Wow. Yeah. Become? It's always been. No, it's really bad. Really? That's why they're not so, allowed downtown. Digby is the town that I grew yeah. up in. And I mean, it was the town that we could come and go anywhere we wanted. But I mean, yeah. here's the deal. Growing up, we always knew there were drugs around. People would bring drugs in on the wharf from out of country all the time. Uh, I down the road found out that people used to make trips to Halifax in the middle of the night to pick up drugs. I mean, call me, yeah. you know, no, but I, I guess, just, but that, yeah. that's why the kids aren't allowed downtown anymore. That's a shame. Cause I mean, I grew up down there. We, yeah. we would do whatever we would get down and climb all over the cenotaph and yeah. jump off the backs of buildings and cli climb down underneath, you know, where the pillars were. So like when the tide comes in, there's those pillars there. We'd climb under the buildings before the tide would come in, and not get caught, you know, mm. it's just silly, stupid shit like that. But <laughs> so yeah uh yeah that covers oh tell them about your new mop that oh, thing is fucking incredible i really don't want to say too much about it until they give me some sort of endorsement for this sure no so, <laughs> you, so where so, did you see it what's it called um i don't know how to pronounce it i don't know about it it's tinico or tinico okay whatever okay. that's fine that's better than i would have i would have yeah, called it's, it like it's t-i-n-e-c-o i believe and i seen it on tiktok and i don't want like i said I think they should be giving me some endorsements for this. But I'd love it if they did. But if anybody, you know, tag them in it, Tinico, T I N E C O. Uh, it's like we're, it's, we're, we will do a review yeah, on this. It, it's somewhere. a power mop. It's a vacuum. It, power mop doesn't really do it justice. No, it's a vacuum and a mop at the same time. And uh, I got it on Prime Day. Mm -hmm. It was. Because uh, you've had your eye on it for quite a while. <clears throat> I had my eye, yeah, and um, Prime Day, it was $100 off, so I'm like, okay, well, you know what, I'm going to get it, and if it doesn't work or if I don't like it, I can send it back, because it came right. back from, it came from Amazon, so I got it, really, really easy setup, 
uh, came with two bottles of chemical, came with two brushes. And the brushes look like paint rollers. They look like paint rollers. Yeah. So you do that again? What was the shape? <laughs> like, like a meat, like the meat. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> so, All right. So, so like, they look like paint rollers. And then you, uh, so you fill up a little reservoir with water in the cleaner and it's, it's totally cordless and it's, it's like self-propelled. So it's like a self-propelling lawnmower. Right. So when you, when you turn it on and you pull the handle down, it propels. And so like it, there's no effort whatsoever right. in doing it. And it was really like, and it's funny, you don't realize because you mop the house every day. Well, I, I'm, I'm really, really particular about my floors. I like my floors clean. It's funny you didn't and, use the word anal about your floors. I was like, <laughs> that's really weird. Okay. No, I'm very particular. It's yeah. because, well, it's because we have all the dogs right. and they're always bringing stuff in and, and I'm, and I'm so, I'm so particular about the floors. Yeah. So I have a, a Swiffer mop. I have a spin mop. I have a steam mop and I steam mop my floors uh, probably twice a month and I'm, and I'm, I swiffer mop and I spin mop probably every day, every other day. I, I swiffer mop every day. And, and you think I, the floors are clean. You think that they are clean. So, because like the day before I got my mop, I had swiffer mopped and I spin mopped. And then I put this, um, I, I put the vacuum together and everything and I did the floors and the water in it collects water the like water looked like chocolate milk and it, it was it was probably it, it it was disgusting so i went over my floors like three or four times and never have they like even walking on them they felt so clean and um it is cordless and it it has um it's not it's not usb chargeable it what is the eight what is it has the, an ac adapter ac with adapter yeah, with it yeah. um so I go over my floors. I went over them three or four times. The water, um, the water like just kept getting lighter and lighter. But the best part about it is you put it on this little tiny black mat and you plug it in. It is pretty cool. You actually. press the, the power button for thir for three seconds and it self cleans. It's this one, right? Uh, the floor three, three. Okay. Three. It self cleans. So you don't ever have to clean it. And so and I it really work. It really works. Like yeah. I, the first time I did, it, I cleaned it. I, I ran it like four times to clean it. I cleaned it until okay. that. Uh, I believe it's that. Okay, I'll bring them up. Anyway. Yeah. I cleaned it. And I cleaned it until the water ran clear and, and it's clean. And then we just, I just did it again tonight and I, I do it all and the floors look so good. And we just put all the new vinyl flooring down and there, it doesn't leave streaks and it, and it vacuums up and it picks up dog hair, cat hair, and, and it picks up every, like, it's, it's incredible. Like, I just love it. There it is and, guys. I mean, so, um, and there's not much to it. It's actually no. pretty basic. The thing is powerful. What's cool about it is when you, go to push it forward it recognizes you're pushing it forward and then it starts self-propelling yeah but as soon as you stop going forward it disengages so it must have some sort well, of as soon as you put the handle up it stops that too but yeah did you notice when you go to pull back with it it doesn't pull against you yeah it's smart enough to know that you're not going forward anymore so it stops spinning itself and the whole thing of it cleaning itself is incredible it's not a no gimmick that's what i'm like no we, it's not well and that's why and that's what i was thinking when i bought it i was like okay well that's why i said i'm gonna try it and if it's crap i'll just send it back but i i am serious this is probably the best mop i have ever had uh, the only the only qualm about it is i wish the water reservoir was a little bit was a little bit yeah. bigger it, it, it's about the size of a really large coffee cup it is and if it was a because like if you're on a really good cleaning streak, then it runs out and you <laughs> have to, you have to refill it. But I, I wish that was a little bit bigger, but I think if they made it too big, then it would, wouldn't be as portable either. Yeah, it wouldn't. It, so yeah. The shark steam mop. You have that, don't you? I have a steam mop. This is better. This is than better. A, this is better than a steam mop. Yep. It, I've, we have tried, like I said, we have tried so many things. Yeah. 
because we have dog, we have laminate floor, or no, it's vinyl floor. It's vinyl. vinyl plank floor, and this just does it. It's yeah. unreal. No, I I do have um the if you're gonna get the shark steam, get this one. This one is way better than the steam mop. Will here's the thing. I don't know yeah. where to fit these products into the channel. Whether whether we do them on we'll do them the when I'm on channel with you. or yeah. Do them when I'm on here. We could do it as a live. Thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just I want to review them. I just and like Letty said, yeah. And that's and that's what irks me. Like I wear sandals and I have house sandals. But if I'm walking around in my bare feet and I'm stepping on crunchies or if I if I'm picking up like dog hair on my feet, I get so irritated and then yeah. then out comes the mop and I start mopping and everything. But this one, it's like three or four days before I actually have to do it again. And it's like, but um, but like I said though, like yeah, with the steam mop, I, I steam mop all the time and this cleaned way better. I don't know. I just I love it. I love when yeah. somebody puts some work into a product and it free it's new and it works well. I don't know who came up with this, but this is an incredible. It's an incredible tools for the home reviews. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> Chris Dixon always comes up with the best names. You know what? Here's the deal. We could do a review just on a <laughs> not a Wednesday or a Friday. We'll just do a different review just, because people. Well, will, yeah. and I have a I have a really bad habit of liking. I like gadgets. You and, and okay. I'm always we're the same. Gadgets. You buy all kinds of home gadgets. Yeah. And I used to bust your balls a lot because <laughs> you were on and it's not not anything, but you were on a losing streak for a while with yeah. gadgets. I but you this... have knocked it out of the park with the last couple of them. Well, I bought this steam mop that has two pads and they spin like this. Oh, and that thing. I could just take that and throw it through a door because it's just it looks like it, it looks like something you'd see in that stupid mouse trap game for kids. Oh, and it, it didn't clean for shit. And but, but the vacuum you bought, which I have not yes. done a video yet on, guys. What is that one? That's the Dyson cordless. Oh, that mom just asked. Oh. Best vacuum, mom. Dyson cordless. Oh, but it, it, it's not cheap. So here, okay. No, here's it's the deal, not guys. Cheap. We are going to do a review on the Dyson cordless we bought, but I'm also going to buy an adapter for it, which she finally gave me permission to do. Well. Okay, I'm going to backtrack that a little bit because I did give you permission, but then you told me that I couldn't hang it anymore. I'll so figure I'm out kinda, if I can. Yeah. I'm kind of still on the fence with that because I have it hanging in my living room behind my end table and it fits beautifully there. And and last weekend... What if I built you a hanger so it's still hung on the wall? Would you be good with that? I might be. Let me think about okay. it. Okay. So the Dyson... It's a the Dyson V8 Pet, I think I have. Yeah. And it has a little attachment that goes to the main canister, and you can do your couches. Yeah, you can instantly turn it in, almost in, into a dirt and, a dirt devil or a dirt and a devil brush. It, it's the it best vacuum ever. I was using it earlier, and I did my my mat by the door, and it picks up everything. I love my I love my the Dyson. Only complaint that I've had about it is that. The battery life is a little yeah. The short. battery life, and actually, I think it probably kills the battery life more depending on how much debris it's picking up too. Like, and also, like how much when you have work, so it has. It's really weird. It has yeah. four settings on it. it. Has level one, two, and three, and then boost. So obviously, boost is the best. Yeah. I take the vacuum with me. It took it was I, I it took some balls to ask you, but I'm like, honey, can I take it to the to the 12 unit with me? Okay, but tell them why. Because I break shit or oh, I leave yeah, shit on the back just, of my truck. And my Dyson came home with a dent in it. No, it didn't. I the didn't shaft do that. has a I dent. I didn't do that. You know, that. I don't. We know. found it in the house, so the dogs did it. I really did. But anyway, the dogs did. It. No, you did it, I, and you put a dent in the shaft of my Dyson. If I did it, so, I don't know how it happened. So yeah, you never know how it happened. If there. So, there is an upgrade that we can that you can do for it that will allow it to run. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> you can run the Dyson off of DeWalt batteries. It's fucking incredible. It's like a $15 upgrade on Amazon. But it won't hang on the wall anymore. I don't think it'll hang. That is now. I need to look, baby. Please because look. it might what about hang the little one. It might hang without a DeWalt battery on it. Well, that would be fine. Yeah, I will check and see because it I think that I think that'll make a great video showing how to who <laughs> that? It's Arthur. Arthur. <laughs> oh, the little kitten. I was like, somebody's killing a cat out there. <laughs> yeah, so it's an upgrade that'll allow you to run it off DeWalt batteries. Because that is the biggest problem with ours with the Dyson, is that and especially have you noticed 
we've had it for almost a year now, right? Yes. It, does it seem like the battery life has decreased a bit? Not on this one, no. No? But the one that went to the daycare, yes. Oh, is that the original That's one? That's the original one. This is the new one. I'll just go swap out the shafts on one for the other, and you can, you can leave the dented one at the daycare. How about that? Yeah, there. <laughs> that'll work. Yeah, no, I use my, um, Letty, I use my Dyson on hardwood flooring, too, and, and I use it on, well, I did our mattress, and I do pillows, and I do the couches, and I, I use it for everything. So I use it when I take it over to the 12 unit. Now you got the, the it's carpet and all these, but the people respect the hell out of the place. I love that. They're really good. We have signs like if, if, if your shoes are dirty, take them off before you come in. But the, the westerly entrance is the one where the parking is. So that gets 98% of the traffic. So the east entrance is like vacuum, vacuum, and you're done. There may be three pieces of dirt. The hallways are really good. But where you get the most dirt is the west entrance because that's where everybody comes and goes, especially that main door with the mats in it. And so that's where I use the boost end of it. But what you end up getting is, is people walk up. So they're really nice stairs. And on the outside of each of the stairs, they have about a two to three inch lip. It's just kind of fancy and, and the, the carpet's there as well. But that's really hard to vacuum. So what I do is I leave the the aluminum shaft on it, but I take the head off the vacuum and I just use it like a, um, a sucker hose all the way down and it works great. That's how it, it got dented. Yeah. No. <laughs> And that's what I use to pick up all the little <coughs> dirt and stuff, and it works really good. And it empties really good. And if it clogs up, yep. it's just in that little area. Oh, and you the can emptying it is so good. Yeah, that's right. But you right can only. unclog it really easily. Yep. And like, there's it's... oh, also no filters. Like yeah. they have filters, but they're hundred percent reusable. There's nothing yep. in them. You, nothing you ever have to replace. You can just wash it, and then you just open it up. You put it over the dumpster or the garbage can, you just flick a switch and everything goes boom and out. Yeah, and if it gets stuck, you just go like this a couple times and it all yep. comes yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just yeah. try not to do it too hard so I don't break it because I would yeah. be sad. But yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's light as a feather. It's made well. Um, I it Well, it's it, a little it, it's a little heavier for me. Is it? I yeah, was going to, okay. But um, because when, remember, I was using it on the couch there. Yeah. If I'm using it too long, it is a little bit harder on my hands. It It is a heavier item when used as a dirt devil, like yeah, a small because compact. the because it is heavy. It, it but... gets a little unbalanced because yeah. all the weight is in the canister area, whereas when you're using the long one, you've got the head on the ground and that takes some of the weight and off. And you know what I wish? And one thing I do wish that it had was a locking button. Yeah, because you I, have to hold yeah. the button down, and and that I have the and I have the problem I... with my fingers, and constantly holding the button right. is a little bit of a, a pain in the ass. But you know, I would I would not trade my Dyson for anything. Tools for the home reviews. I got to remember that. <laughs> That's really good, Chris Dixon. I'm going to take a picture of that so I don't forget. And uh, yeah, yeah. But going back to between the Dyson and the, the Tinico, probably this, the only two home cleaning devices you need. Yes, and I use the Swiffer, my Swiffer Wet Jet for just quick cleanup. I freaking but, hate that thing. I, it just isn't that good. I use it for quick. I know. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I mean, I say I hate it. I mean, I do use it, but not as often as you, of course. So no, and I and I try not to use it too much now because I'm using the Tinico. But um, I don't want the the Tinico picking up. Like sometimes we have a dog that likes to pee in the house, mm. and I don't want to put pee on that. A dog, okay. Yeah, well, Dottie. Yeah, old. Dottie. And yeah, so Dottie has an, an issue. So but we she's use. Like 104 years old and she came from a puppy mill so i can't yeah so that. we don't we don't get too mad at her but we put pads down but sometimes she gets a little overzealous and she misses the pad so we use the swiffer wet jet for cleanup yeah. quickly and then if i do the then i go over it with the the tinico but oh i wanted to i'm gonna toot my own horn here once because it was pretty cool i just put out a video guys yesterday it was called uh how to upgrade the plugs on your generator and it got a thousand views in the first 22 hours. I've never, that is the most by about five times. That was the biggest blow up I've ever had. It slowed down now, but it was really cool. I, I Whatever I'm doing, I guess is kind of working, but it was uh, was neat for that to show up. I was showing you some of the stats on it. Yes. It had a really good click through rate. So I'm, I think between the title I picked and the thumbnail, it was, uh, yeah, it was good. And brought Oh, what are we there? looking? Uh, oh, no, okay. I agree with the Swiffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we spend. Well, I I have it up on I have it on my Amazon subscriptions, mm -hmm. so I I do get the fifteen percent discount the, with yeah, it. But they do cost but a the, lot. But 
not as much as it used to because I don't use it as regularly as I used to. Right. So like the Swiffer wet jet, you got to buy the stupid pads and you got to buy the cleaner filler and stupid pads for jerks. <laughs> stupid cleaner for jerks. But, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a reference. It just, um, yeah, no, it can be, it's yeah. not very costly. You're right. And, and if, if you're worried about waste, Swiffer. <laughs> Swiffer is one of the worst for waste. I mean, the you pads. the pads, you oh throw them away like crazy. And then the friggin' um the what the stuff you I don't know, the cleaner, whatever the solution mm -hmm. it is, th those aren't refillable either. Nope. They're a one-time use container, so they're miserable. And oh, then, but I can use for a reference though. I will say that with the Swiffer wet jet, when you have the what the white pads, yep. Um, after I use the tentacle mop. Remember I showed you? Oh, yeah. I was cleaning up a mess. And sometimes, you know how you get like the brown yeah. from the dirty floor? There was no speck of brown. I, I hunted him down. I'm like, you've got to look at this patch. She went, that night, we were <laughs> so, up to like midnight. And we weren't like canon or anything. She was like, okay, I just want to run it through the self-cleaning cycle one more time. <laughs> and then she she's like walking around the house showing everybody calling up the girls out east you're like you got to see this the, the dirt water looks like chocolate milk it's fucking incredible she was so proud of it, it was awesome so proud yeah but the swiffer pad had no dirt I on it yeah and i don't i think you were down in the basement and i called as you got to see this there was nothing on it there were my floor there was no dirt on my floors yeah no it was awesome yeah. it really is a good product I, yeah. so far i mean we've used it for a couple of weeks now or oh, only I just a week used it yeah. again tonight yeah. and charlotte came in the living room she's like she's like uh mom your floors look so good and i'm like oh i know thank you <laughs> i was so excited <laughs> It's like complimenting a woman on her new haircut. Oh, you know? I well, you know, I work because I try so hard to keep the floors clean, and and when someone actually, when you can notice it, it's it's That's nice. True, yeah, yeah. Chris says you can replace those pads with a microfiber cloth, and that makes sense. Yeah. I've never thought about probably doing the, it, but... the steam mop cloth. Maybe. Yeah, it would work. But, but I, I use whatever, the Swiffer yeah. pads to clean up Dottie's messes. So. Oh. In the garbage, there ain't no go. reusing those. Yeah, that's for sure. No, and and it's I don't want to. I don't want to yeah. have a, a huge there. pile of laundry that I gotta no. wash all the time. So, so we watched. So, oh no, I wanted to show it one more thing for anybody who lives in Alberta, and I don't know if anybody else collects records or likes records, but I found a good old fashioned record shop in Edmonton called Listen Records. And it was right next to my silver and gold shop that I go to. And I never noticed it before. And it was the coolest friggin' place with the best prices and the, the most awesome selection. And they let dogs in there. The dude just walks in with his dog. Not like a not like an emotional support dog or anything. He's just his friggin' dog. And he's just in chilling. And it's just the type of place. It reminded me of the video store, like movie rental places from the mm -hmm. 80s and 90s. Everybody just goes in to hang out, chill, and talk. But, man, they had. I picked up uh, a Nirvana record that you can't find anywhere. And I picked up uh, the Pixies, um, Where Is My Mind album. And both I've never seen on the shelves anywhere. But this day of new and used records. So it was it was a cool little adventure for us. And since last, we were Friday last week. So we've been eight days, right? We watched three movies this week, which is unheard of for us mm -hmm. lately. Hey, do you want me to bring up Letty's comment there? She said, um, I was mopping with my O-Cedar spin mop this morning on a work call i do enjoy that spin the water was gray when it, we've used the spin for quite a while too. i have a spin mop but i find the mylita um, one isn't it yeah the violita one the one Violeta, I'm, sorry the one i'm having what i'm having problems with with the spin mop is um the like this especially this time of year the mop heads they stink mm. if they like mm -hmm. it's like a one-time use and then they're down in the washer and then, then I end up getting, and of course I ordered extra. Mm -hmm. Last time I did, I think there was like eight mop heads down here, and then I have to bleach them and wash them. And it's and they started getting warped from the dryer, didn't they? Which yeah. is their own damn fault. They should have <coughs> just put them through the washing machine and left them out of well, the dryer. Well, see, but... the problem is we could now because I'm, I've started bleaching them. Right. But before we weren't we weren't doing that. We were just using laundry soap. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, so, but they. Yeah. I. I don't like them. I don't find. I mean. So they do work they but do they're, they're hard to it, i guess it's because yeah. we're dealing with dogs right so. yeah and but like the but of course like and of course the one time there we had the girls watching uh the dogs for us and i had the spin mop water and they used that water like the whole week oh yeah and we came home and remember oh, the whole house smelled like so dirty mop bad. Head. yeah and they're just little they're just kids yeah, like they're only they like 15 they didn't know any better but i was just like i i 
I was so grossed out. <laughs> I was just like the whole, Lenny the whole says one container of like water. It. No. So there is a new one that solves that. Remember, you got the one that keeps the clean and dirty yeah. water separate. And, oh, I hated it. I hated it. But it was just, all it did was include or introduce complexities to it. Yeah. It was new parts, not more moving parts, but more parts that could go wrong. It didn't work as good. No, we just, and we yeah. fucking took the top off and just did it normally. Well, and, anyway. and it and it um it, it doesn't hold as much. It doesn't hold as much. And didn't we find that dirty water was spinning out? Like, oh, it's because yeah. we took the top off it. Yeah, it just yeah. Oh, essential oils would help. Yeah, it would. But yeah, and Martinson says the nut comes off the end and gets lost. Yeah, for sure. Like it, they're good in theory. We used them for a while, but I think you're pretty stuck on that, right? So I love this new yeah, one. Letty says that double container one got horrible reviews because it was a piece of shit. That's yeah, why. I was so excited yeah. about it when it came out. And I was like, oh, it's going to keep it separate. So I, of course, because I have the old spin mop and I've got the new one right. because I have a problem. But it's, um, but I, I don't like the new one. No. Not at all. And it, what ended up happening so. was we just took the, the top container part off it and then it became an inferior version of the original well yeah but now when you spin it the water, the water that's, shoots yeah. out everywhere it because have it's, a, it's a sitting up it. too high yeah yeah oh it's just gross it that yeah. double that double one was that was somebody mm -hmm. somewhere trying to fix a problem by making everything else worse yep they but didn't honestly, improve it at all honestly that spin mop's going in the garbage yeah because i or unless somebody wants it but um no this this tentacle mop that's oh, all yeah. i'm using do you want to give a so we, we watched three movies this week? Yes. I think this is the one we want to talk about the most. It don't matter. Yeah. I, yeah, well, let's do the bottom one. All right. First. So we watched Sisu. If anybody has seen it, yeah. It's okay. They they claim they it was advertised as the John Wick of World War II. It takes place in this it was a Scandinavian country. Is that where it was? Or I don't um, remember. I thought it was like Ukrainian. Maybe. Yeah. So the something. dude it. The problem was in here, and Nate and Aaron, they said they've got it on their to, to watch list, and it's not it's entertaining, but it was one of those films, and we won't spend much time talking about this one because it was just okay, but it was one of those films that it showed everything in the trailer. Finland, Finland thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, I was going to say that we've seen the trailer in the right. theater, and basically it was the whole movie. All of the best kills. Yeah. Were, honestly would have been so much happier if I'd have just stumbled on it on Netflix and watched it on a whim yep. or if I'd have seen, Oh, Hey, it's got like a 98 on rotten tomatoes. Let's watch it. That it would have been way better because all of the best part, not all, I would say 80% of the best parts were spoiled from the trailer. Yeah. So that's what made it a little disappointing because you really, the entire story is told in the trailer as well. So it was a complete opposite experience of the horror movie we watched last yeah. night, but let's talk about John wick four for a minute. <laughs> I liked it. Best John Wick since John Wick 1. Yes. For sure. Yes. The, the other two were good. Well, John Wick 2 was okay. Sure. Yeah, they were but all good. the one good. with Halle Berry. No, that one wasn't I good. I, I did not like, like that one else. at all. Um, the 1, 2, and 4. 3 could just go away. Yeah, I know. But, like, you know, I I watched 3 because sure. Keanu Reeves is awesome in it. But um, but the 4th one was really good. The I liked it one, a lot. The fourth one had a lot of Kill Bill influence in it. Yeah. It, it, I actually read some reviews after we kind of, Becky and I talked about it, and they had mentioned how it almost was like Kill Bill Part 3. It was so good. They're, I would say, the best action set piece of any of the John Wick movies, in my opinion, mm -hmm. was when they did the top-down scene where he's going through the apartment complex or whatever, empty the warehouse complex yep. in France. And he had the dragon's breath shotgun. I mean, totally impractical. <laughs> when when I seen it, so they're they're doing this. Uh, yeah, they said John Wick three kind of jumped the shark. I and I mean, want... John, they did not need to have Halle Berry in it. I know they like. I I'm I'm not a fan of Halle Berry no, she's at not all. A great actor. I don't like any of her. I think the only one I've ever actually really watched was The Call. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't like her at all. And and it just seemed like it was just kind of thrown at you. Like, it, yeah, it, didn't, it didn't make sense at all. What I liked about John Wick 4 was it was action. They give you all kinds of action. And they give you a bunch more of the, the lore behind the story. But it never felt like... It never felt made up or forced. Everything about it just felt but, right. But it um but it, it connected weird. one and two yeah. as well. Like, um, like see, I never... I can't even remember number three. 
but I, but it, it had, a, had talk about the hotel mm -hmm. and, and everything like that. And of course, then it made the, um, and, and, uh, the, main, the, the main bellhop or whatever. Oh yeah. Cause he, yeah, of course he passed in real life and, and, but it's like, but they made it, um, I don't know. It's just a better connection than what number three was. Yeah. And number and three just kind of seemed like it was kind of like, you know, like. Is that the, you killed my dog guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so all oh, was so good i yeah. so this this top down shot i mean dragon's breath is one of those i think i i think it was basically designed for youtubers to do cool videos on youtube because i don't think it has a lot of practicality in real life but boy the shots they did were incredible mm -hmm. it was it was fun then there was a, a stair st uh, uh, a stairway scene that w went on forever and then the, I, I mean i won't ruin it but of course the entire movie is heading toward the showdown at the end of it and well and it had um scars guard but i can't oh yeah which the, one was it the one that played pennywise one of, yeah scar and he was actually really good at yeah it. he was um like the accent it was mm, weird yeah I, well he was french they, but yeah you know what i don't they, think they he just let him keep his accent yeah, I, I don't think he has an accent well he must he's from i don't australia think, isn't he or something not no they're um they're Swedish? Scandinavian. Yeah, of course. I don't think he has an accent. Like, but um, I don't think he needed the French accent. I yeah. really don't, but but he was really good in it. Like, Chris Dixon says he needs to watch them. They're <coughs> don't waste your time on number three. Yeah, but they're they're the best. They're as close as you're gonna get to modern day kung fu movies from like the 60s and 50s and whatever. Like I like and Keanu Reeves. Oh, awesome. but they're just so like, good. The gun work in it is incredible, and the martial arts are good in it. I I and love and the driving. Oh, the yeah. driving they they go it, around the the Arc de Triumph or whatever. Yeah, no, that was that was good. It yeah. was good, and I loved the 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 opening fight takes place in Tokyo, and it was very much like old school kung fu and things and, and yeah, sword, really sword play, and it was so good. I loved it. It was great. So it yeah, it was. I I mean, I'd give it five stars for sure. Well, and I, I'm glad we watched it at home because it was it's a very oh, long movie. It's almost three hours long. It's really long. Um, but and it but it, it was good. Even though I love that opening scene, it still did it didn't it feel like it took a while to get going? It did, yeah. Yeah, but boy, the last 90 minutes, it you're on the edge of your seat. Yeah, and no. This movie has as much heart as the first one. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we'll leave it at that. And then last night, uh Becky took me on a date. And we watched uh, Talk to Me, yeah. which I'd never heard of. Never heard and of it either. If you see the poster, you're going to think it's some cheesy. I don't know. It, it the poster doesn't do it justice because it it, it looks it's a severed statue hand. Well, and is. we didn't. I didn't even know what it was until I was going through the Cineplex because yeah, we were going to go see Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, and um, we just. But didn't... then we. But then we talked about another one. I no, that was, was it Oppenheimer. Or, yeah, that was it. So I, was I said I'd rather have a needle like, in my eye than watch Barbie. <laughs> yeah, no, I have no interest in Barbie either. But, but we were um, so scrolling through, and I was like, oh, this is a horror one. So let's go see that one. And then, well, no, you, you yeah. had me look it up first because yeah. it it looked shitty. To it be did. honest, the the trip yeah. the the poster makes it look like a and and again here we are almost August. So this is the dumping ground for shitty horror movies mm. again. And it wasn't, it was anything but. But we looked up Rotten Tomatoes and it had like, was it like a 97 or a 94? Yeah. No, it was. It really. Was, yeah, it's an Aussie film. It's it's a very tight 90 minutes, the thing. Yeah. But you know what? So this is not a slam on the movie. It felt way longer than 90 minutes. It did. But that, the only but thing, that was a good thing. The only thing I, I didn't quite, I didn't really quite like the ending. Yeah, the ending but, is a little ambiguous, and yeah, I, but, we won't give the ending away. No, 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 I won't but say. I, but it was it was a good movie. I didn't mind it at all. No, the writing I, was. I I've been blown away between this one and Evil Dead Rises. The writing in both were so good. So this movie, talk to me, was directed, written, and directed by a freshman director and writer that have never done this before. They've worked on movies, but they've never directed. Almost the entire cast was made up of nobodies. Almost all new actors. Which, and they're all Aussie. All Aussie. Yeah. The whole thing. It felt, it was just, it was so refreshing. Mm -hmm. It was 90 minutes of, the 
there's no CGI in it at all. Well, and the thing is, so like they were they were nobody actors, but the, they were they, fucking good. They were good. Like they weren't un, like they weren't annoying, and it didn't. And like they, they were believable. Like, do you remember? Well, the what the mother was familiar. Yes. I recognize yeah, yeah. her. She's been she's in some TV shows. And yeah, she might have been in that movie with Martin Freeman, Cargo. She might have been the wife in that. I'm not sure. I'm trying. I was trying to peg where she was from. See if I can look um, up here. She kind of looked like the mother from Angela's Ashes. I don't know. That's old, though, isn't it? Yeah. Or... Well, she's she wasn't very. Well, she old looked like she's in her fifties. Yeah. Maybe. So that yeah. would be. I don't know. I, I'm just trying to peg the mother, but um, but the rest of the actors, they were they were believable. They weren't overacting. It wasn't. From Lord of the Rings, War of the Worlds. Oh, Lord of the Rings. Yes, yeah. the, she's the one. She's from Lord of the Rings, the one that said when they're having the war, and the devil says, "No man can kill me," and he goes, and she's like, "I'm not. A, I'm no man. I'm a woman." Oh, right? To, yeah, that's, that's who that right. is. Yeah. yeah, she's very. Uh, she played Marianne in War of the Worlds, which. Uh, yeah, oh, the mother. Oh, the mother. Sure, yeah. Yeah, the, the mother, mother on War of the Worlds that's yeah. pregnant. Yes. Yeah. I knew I recognized her. I just what couldn't peg her. Yeah, but she she wasn't in as many recognizable yeah, roles as I. But I expect, couldn't peg so. her. But I knew who she was. But um, but she was the only one that I recognized. Yeah. It, yeah. it so it was ninety minutes featuring all new actors, featuring a brand new director and writer. No special effects. I mean, sorry, no CGI. No CGI. All just practical in camera blood and gore. Mm -hmm. And it was they awesome. had some jump scares. Jump scares. The writing but, was great. Yeah. There was no wasted. If something was set up, it was paid off in the end. I would say, like you said, the, the story gets a little convoluted toward the end. Yeah. That might have been on purpose because the whole story is a bit of, a bit of an allegory for dealing with loss and grieving as yeah. well. But it was fun. I the first half hour of that movie was the most fun I've had at a horror movie in a while. It was a bunch of teenagers hanging around, basically being stupid. Being stupid. So the idea, and that this, <coughs> it tells you in the in the trailer. So I'm not going to spoil anything for you. But they have what's supposedly a petrified hand of a fortune teller, or a, uh, an embalmed hand, an, an embalmed hand that's been added with, I don't know. Anyway, so it looks yeah. like a statue. So you put you, you put it in your hand and you say, "Talk to me." And then you see a spirit. And yeah. then you say, I let you in. And then the spirit possesses you. And they have to. 90 seconds. 90 they, seconds. They have 90 yeah. seconds to pull the hand off the person before it becomes permanent. Yeah. And of course, it's done in a social media age. So these kids are sitting around. All recording with, with their, their phones, phones and stuff. Yeah. But it was the most. what? Okay. I, this is hard to explain. And for people who aren't movie geeks, probably won't care so much. But it was the most natural and realistic interactions and relationships i've seen with teens in a movie in a long time yeah like even even from her picking up her phone when it was ringing and it said dad and she's ignoring it yeah right all of it just yeah. felt real there yeah. was it, and what okay something else i really liked about it was it wasn't preachy because no. so many of these new films they have the message in there and Okay, I don't care who you are or what you are. Just let it be. It doesn't... If you're telling me a horror movie, who you are, who you sleep with, what you identify as, I don't care. You can just be an actor or an actress doing whatever you want to do, but the rest of it doesn't need... And it was so it was so good. It was just mm -hmm. a fucking 90-minute scary movie that was well-written, that when they introduced something to the plot, it paid off in the end. The relationships were so cool. There was no weirdness... I, I, mm -hmm. I love there, there's a, a girl in the movie who was dealing with the grief of losing her mother mm -hmm. and she kind of inserted herself into her best friend's family. They acted like a surrogate mother and yep. sister and brother for her. And she had the nicest, sweetest relationship with that boy. Yeah. You know, he was like, it, it could have easily been played off as he had this big crush on her or something because <laughs> no, he was, it wasn't. he was like, he, you know what else I yeah. liked about it? What was he? 12? No, I think he was like 14. Or he 15. was 14, but he still played like a little kid, and you almost never get that anymore. You know, he was 14 and he was kind of scared to sleep on his own. And he yeah. went and hung out with the, the adopted sister, and they had just a sweet relationship. They 
so often they just fuck that up in movies nowadays. Mm -hmm. And it was so Well, they always have to make it something more than what it is. Something more than it is or just, I don't know, but it was just so nice. It Mm -hmm. was. And people were real in it. The mother got a little annoying at times, but she was dealing with her own shit too, right? I think what happened to the dad was was it? They never said. Yeah. I think it was a divorce. I think that's what was implied. But so it was a great film. I, it was awesome. It, and the best part, it was made for four and a half million, which might sound like a lot, but that's peanuts today. And I was checking out the box office tonight and they are going to end up doubling their money in their first weekend. So, and that's just domestic. So we're, who knows what they'll make. Typically horror doesn't do as good worldwide, but whatever, if they can make 20 million off a four and a half million dollar investment, absolutely. I'm all about these small contained horror films. Keep making $4 million horror movies because nobody needs Indiana Jones and the curse of the geriatric anymore. Like no, nobody needs a $400 million movie of a Barbie. CGI Harrison Ford running around pretending to still be young. And well, we, and nobody needs a $400 million Barbie movie either. Well, I think so. Barbie was only about 80 million, but we don't need, <coughs> nobody wants a candy coated 90 minute commercial for a has or Hasbro property Mattel. that <laughs> is pretending to be, or is um, pretending not to be like a modern political I yeah soapbox. I, it's I haven't it's even watched. It yet, I haven't so. watched any of it, and honestly, I don't think I've seen any of the trailers really. No, I no, have no and interest. I I have I have no I I have no interest in Barbie. One step closer says, imagine a movie that focuses on a character and plot with an idea. I know right. instead of in, in, in well, instead of hidden agendas and you know I you watch know, the hidden critic, messages the critical drinker all the time. You hear him the, yeah. the, the British guy and he. He always says he he has a funny way of saying he goes the message and that's what it is it, it doesn't need it i no it, i mean i understand that pop culture in general can be a way to get your views across mm-hmm. but the difference is is that if you tell an effective story that happens to include character settings or principles that you believe in that's the way to do it. Instead of starting with an agenda and starting with a movie and pushing it down somebody's throat, build yourself believable, real characters with a real story, with real emotional stakes, and then just include whatever you believe in it. And that's, yeah, Byron says, uh, yeah, <laughs> one step closer is also a um, <laughs> critical drinker. He's like, it's all I got. Go away now. <laughs> He's funny. He, I, I, I enjoy him a lot. I mean, he obviously has his own personal beliefs about things too that shine through at times. But I appreciate it. You know, I, I watch movie critics of all bends for well, sure. Well, I find with with movies too, it's getting down to the point where you can almost tell what companies support those agendas. Sure, you can. Like if you're getting into um. Uh, Disney. Well, the big one is Disney. Sure. Like it, anything that is backed by Disney. Because um, we, we saw that one that we hated. Uh, yeah, Elemental. Element. And I, okay. Yeah. That's, I, I've been thinking about Elemental a lot lately. Yeah. That could have been a really cool movie about immigration the way it was. Yeah. You know, it could have been a really cool movie about a family that dealt with immigration in the background. But instead... It just come across as preachy again. Yeah. And just so you know, we didn't go see Elemental on our own. It was our nephew's birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, but it was, um, but like, I find anything that has that Disney back. Oh, sure. Disney yes. is the worst. And then, but like, you can almost, like, you can almost look at the studio and figure out if it's going to be, oh, a, yeah. a, if it's going to be one of those. All right. Backwoods, Backwoods says he was super excited to see that. Are you talking about Elemental? I hope not. Because it really is a bad film. I think he's and being, is he being funny? <laughs> I don't know. He might not because he's got kids, right? So, <laughs> Oh, don't go. But I can't tell if, I can never tell if Kyle's sarcastic <laughs> or not. So you might, might not be, but you can, yeah. And I'm not joking. Um, we went for our nephew's birthday party and it was at the theater and it was already playing. So um get off my lawn. <laughs> I went up to my sister after the movie and I said to her, I said, You ever do that to me again, I'm gonna throw punch you. Because that was that was the most painful, drawn out, obnoxious, 
agended movie that I have ever seen. It was awful. And, and I, and I, and like, honestly, I think the only thing worse would have been the live action aerial movie or oh, yeah. like the live action uh, princess I, movies that they've been doing. So it, it's just been ridiculous. Yeah. He said, uh, um, Backwood says I was actually looking like a fun movie with the kids. Ah, it's not. No, it's not. I, you know, here's the thing. It's, I, it's so brutal. Disney like, is continuing its slow motion train wreck at the box office mm -hmm. because this weekend they opened up Haunted Mansion, another movie based on a theme park ride. They were hoping to find lightning in a bottle it's again. It's been They've already made the Haunted Mansion. Right. Because didn't, wasn't Eddie Murphy in the original one? Oh, maybe it was. Yeah. Like, I'm. But I'm sure this is another it's remake. It's going to be another, I think it's going to be another failure for them. Oh, I have, no, Disney's, no, Disney is awful, but that Elemental movie, it is, it is painful and it is brutal and it is, it is like the longest it, crap I have what ever I watched. Thought, Elemental, so Zootopia is also Disney, right? That Zootopia mm, was a Disney, an animated Disney. Disney or Pixar? Well, Pixar is Disney, but yeah, but, but it's no, two different. No, no, Zootopia was Disney animation. Okay. And I loved Zootopia. Mm -hmm. And what I felt like was <laughs> um Elemental was trying to be Zootopia, but eight years later in the political climate we live in. I don't know what I don't know what element like I I'm not sure Elemental knew what it was trying to be. Well, I knew what it was trying, like I knew what they were trying to do, but it was the whole like I found it was very stereotype. It, like they I were stereotyping. They to, it was really bad. Yeah, it was probably done like, by people from Oriental descent. I hope it was. I don't if know. It wasn't. It wouldn't have been that good. It so. was no. It was really stereotyping. Like, like just for an example, because I don't want to offend anybody, but it was a stereotype. Like um, the fire family were I it, the impression that they were like Chinese, yeah, or Japanese or whatever. Uh, were immigrants coming to what I would imagine would be the U.S. Yeah, and then they're put into kind of like um, a rundown area, and they open up a convenience store. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they were going. I know what so, they were going. It didn't work. No, it, it was but bad. but like that that stereotype right there. Mm -hmm. They like that right there kind of rubbed me the wrong way, because like so basically. You're telling everybody that Oriental people come over that the only thing they can do is open up a convenience store. So it's like, um, I don't know. I, I found it. I don't know. I, I didn't like it at all. Letty said they, I never saw Toy Story 4. I heard it was good. Said yeah. she went and saw it at the library last night. I just happened to pick up this little piece of trivia earlier today. But Keanu Reeves was in that film. <laughs> Toy Story 4 is still the largest box office of a Keanu Reeves movie ever. No, the funny thing is I never liked any of the Toy Stories. I remember watching the first one in 95. <laughs> oh, I haven't... Everybody was talking about this. Keanu Reeves is Duke Kaboom. Duke Kaboom, a Canadian treasure. Little trivia about Keanu Reeves, too. He is partly Canadian, isn't he? He is Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, the, but there is a, a SpongeBob movie that the kids watch. Mm -hmm. And he's he plays Sage in uh a tumbleweed okay and he's his face is in the tumbleweed really yeah <laughs> he seems like such a cool dude i would yeah yeah yes canada that's cool yeah he i i don't know it would he'd be a cool guy to sit down and have a have an old yeah he's pretty he's so. pretty uh laid back. and all of a sudden uh he apparently just got back together with his grunge band from the 90s oh did he they haven't it, dog something i can't remember anyway he hasn't uh they haven't played together in like 25 years and he's oh. like hey let's go on tour <laughs> He's just like some shitty bassist for him or something, but I mean, <laughs> well, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, everybody's into it, you know. So yeah, no, it just I don't know. I but I yeah. So yeah, but he he plays Sage. Okay, and you can see his face in the tumbleweed. It's it's he, really funny. He's a cool dude. I'm not sure what SpongeBob movie it is. I can't. I think it's the. It's not the one with David Hasselhoff. It's the next one. Then. I don't know if it came before. Sponge out of water. So I don't know. I don't yeah, know which one it is. Yeah, I haven't watched it. But anyway, that's, uh, yeah. Keanu it, Reeves. Keanu Reeves. So that was pretty funny. Letty saw, uh, oh, uh, Backwood says, Ray of the Dragon was pretty good. Didn't shove it down your throat. And Letty Lou, most recent Disney film we saw was Encanto. No, I liked Encanto. We don't talk about 
what don't we talk about? Bruno. Bruno. I, I've never seen it. No, actually, yeah. I, I liked Encanto. Um, I, I didn't care for um, the Mexican one that they had. Uh, the the one that Encanto. dealt with death. No, it wasn't Encanto. No, it was the one oh, came before that. I know it's when you're talking about Cinco de Mayo or whatever. Yeah, I yeah. didn't care for that. But maybe it's just because I didn't understand it. I don't know. But Yeah, but no, Encanto. I, the, um, the sister. Mm. Uh, I can't remember her name. That's okay. The, she's the real strong one. She reminds me of Olivia. <laughs> just being strong. No, <laughs> and just, just just broody yeah. <laughs> like Olivia. So it's like, mm. so she's like she she walks down um <laughs> the street. She's carrying like eight donkeys. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that would so when just, we were little, Olivia would yeah, be like, she, she reminded was, me of Olivia. But if we needed help, she'd be like, "I'll lift it, Dad." But Encanto had some good had some good songs in it and yeah. stuff. Coco, but, that's what it was. You know I, don't, I don't think I watched it. Coco. It was okay. I mean, it was nowhere near as bad as Elemental. Let's put it that It was okay. Yeah. But yeah, it was, um, yeah. When Steph well, says Coco, the movie made me misty-eyed. And I we know, should talk about before Elemental, what? that that little short. That was oh. ridiculous. Okay, yeah. Let, yeah. All right, we'll okay, so, on the, Yeah, I okay. forgot about that. So they had a short before Elemental. It should be if you're going to a G-rated animated film. Shouldn't if you're going to introduce a short before it should fit the theme. Exactly. Th this is not something, and this is not something that a bunch of four-year-olds should have watched. And it was it was about it was the movie Up. It was like a five or ten minute short. five ten yeah. minutes short of Up, and um, about how he's has a dog now and he and of course everyone uh like you know he's a he's a widower and mm -hmm. he lost his wife and he's extremely you know he's depressed about how he's gonna move on to dating being a widower and it was like and the dog wears a collar and it taught and it can communicate with him and stuff but it was just, so inappropriate it just it, it was, shouldn't have played at the front of that movie no I don't it was know who, so I don't know inappropriate yeah and like you know like he's He's got a picture of him and his wife on the fire mantle. The dog. And and then he goes over to the picture and he's like, "Don't wait, wait up for me." And he turns the picture around and everything. Like it was so inappropriate for. It had nothing to. Yeah, it was no, bad. I yeah. Uh, I no, it remember. was just I. Uh, and it's like okay, so they're they're poking fun at this poor old man who has lost his wife as a widower and still struggling with it. But basically poking fun at him because he he's not ready to date yet. Yeah, it, like it, it just, just the theme. It was it was it was awful. Oh, like we were watching. Like I remember looking at Tim and I'm like, did we really just watch that? Mm. Like this. And was like, this really the the uh, the movie or the the short playing for a movie aimed at entertaining kids? Yeah, and kids, yeah, and and Elemental was not worth. I mean, the kids, the 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 kids that were there were they, rolling. They had in no the, interest. They were rolling in the aisles. They no, they were it, running so. up the aisle. They were running back down. They were throwing their Hot Wheels cars down the middle of the aisle and everything. And um, but like the the whole part of like that that little oh, short in the beginning awful. that that was really like it was one of it those was, things where was I was watching. I was like, oh my goodness, I don't even want to. We like were, it was sad. Yeah, right? we were like, watching it, and I'm like, what the hell were they thinking? And and what what four-year-old child would even understand that they wouldn't but it, right. to me it still right. shouldn't have been there it was no, awful it shouldn't and and they were poking fun at this poor widower and it was i don't know yeah, i just i, I didn't just, think i it hated was right. it it was it was off-putting yeah. it felt um i i don't know it, it, I, I you can't say it felt exploitative i mean how can you say a cartoon's exploitive but it was just awful yeah. I hated it. I it was every bit about it was oh so maybe Doug the dog was in the first movie too. I didn't know if they. If, I don't know. Yeah, I don't but, actually. I've never watched up. Yeah, it, me either. Like, I heard I've heard it watched was good, bits but, and pieces. Yeah, but I've never watched the whole thing. But um, but the dog had a collar, and it could it could talk, and and I don't know. I just, I just I, it, it, it was, was not. It was. It wasn't was, funny. It was it in was, poor taste. I thought it was in poor taste. Yeah, but anyway, whatever. Like, it's you know the cool thing they can do whatever they want, and yeah. I mean we but. I can also sit back and criticize them for what I want. Exactly. That, it was the, in the poor taste and in. it was very inappropriate. Yeah. It was awful. Like, and I, and again, that that's Disney. I don't, I don't understand what they're thinking. I don't, I think don't know they what they're either. doing. Up will make yeah. any married person, especially, I believe that. Yeah. I, we, and yeah. this was even worse because the poor guy sitting there and he's got the picture of his wife 
And he's like, oh, well, don't wait it out for me. And he turns, turns it, it around. around. Like, like, dude, dude you you're mean, obviously not ready to go dating you if you're still yet. talking to your but, wife's picture. But why are right? we even like, having this conversation about yeah. this playing in a kid's movie? Right? Yeah, oh. it shouldn't. No, and no. Uh, it was, it was, it was, yeah, no, it was wrong. I hated it. Yeah, it was, I hate, I don't even yeah. like using that word, but yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was bad. No, Disney does not know what Disney is doing at they, all. They don't. I, no. I mean, I, they, they know what they're doing, or at least they think they, Well, yeah. they have lots of agendas. Yeah, so anyway, that's honestly like, and, and of course then um, in the news there about Disney, their theme parks are really suffering yeah. bad and stuff. Um, I don't think I would lose sleep if Disney went bankrupt. No, I don't think I, so I'm either. so tired of them. I'm so tired of their crappy Marvel movies. I'm tired of their crappy Marvel shows. I'm tired of their hidden agendas. I'm so they're sub, just they're sub jamming it. Yeah. Like I, I said, I that watching a Marvel TV show or a Marvel movie now feels like eating Chinese food. No, the last you know? Marvel for, movie for me was Endgame. Yeah. That was it. You leave it yeah. vaguely satisfied. But really let down. You're like, why do I do this to myself? You know, it's well, like eating the, a whole bunch of carbs. And then Disney, Disney has all those ridiculous shows. Yeah, like where they're exploiting these kids and getting them to act like idiots. Oh, yeah, on TV. That's true. Like, yeah. just like I don't know if anybody watches them, but like, um, back when uh, Ariana Grande. Uh, I don't think that was Disney. That was no, Nickelodeon. No, but, but it's the same yeah. type of thing. Sure, like, it is. Yeah, they they have these kids on these shows and they have them acting like complete idiots yeah kids don't act like that no like that, the that the, yeah, the obnoxiousness the the overacting the being really loud and trying to be funny and that's kids don't act like that, that and awful. and what why are you making these children act like that and it's and honestly disney just needs to go away like it's just awful i don't know what i don't like what they do to the kids yeah well, Mrs. Cook, we've been two hours, eleven minutes, and eight seconds, and that your voice. To be. Your, well, why don't we go? Want to try to find a movie tonight? Sure. See if we can watch something because by tomorrow you're going to have no voice again. You've yeah. done really well tonight. I, I, have, been, I've been I, I did not pop, think so. I didn't think it would hold up for you, but yeah. <laughs> listen, look at the chain Disney left Britney Spears. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. they destroy their children. Oh yeah, yeah. I was. Oh, I, don't, I hate even thinking about it. You know, mm -hmm. it's a sin. Those poor kids. I mean, you look at how messed up they're going to be. You know, mm -hmm. but. Well, what do you think? We'll go up and see what the dogs are doing, and we'll uh, yeah, watch a movie on the or something. I heard them barking at us. <laughs> yes. I don't know what the hell they're up to, but this was fun. I think we topped out. I think I saw 19 people in here at one nice. time to listen to us talk about the world's largest slab of meat and uh, the world's <laughs> largest uh, sea ring, whatever that was. But we had a lot of fun. This was fun. I, I love our Friday night. Yeah, this was Saturday, but it was a good Saturday show. Yeah. So this one will end up in the audio. Um, yeah, this will be in the audio feed later on tonight. No, you know, are you losing your shit? Oh, I don't know. It'll be me. great. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Letty Lou. We appreciate you. Uh, so what do we got coming up? There's two things I wanted to mention. We've got tomorrow night. Um, we are gonna meet around the round table. I've got three butch I got Kyle, the renegade butcher. I've got Josh, the oh no, no, back up there, Tim. Kyle, the backwoods butcher, Josh, the renegade butcher, and Adam from A Modern Frontier. All three are going to come on. So if you guys have questions about anything related to meat, <laughs> this is the craziest thing ever. But yeah. Not so, not the yeah. world's largest meat. Livestock, <laughs> carcasses, whatever you want. Yeah. Anyway, if you have questions, send them along because we're going to... This is the first of hopefully many roundtables. I've kind of decided we've had many, many incredible guests over the last three years. And I've made some great friends and I wanted to bring people into a round table discussion where we can have some experts beating some ideas around. And these guys are just going to beat the meat around a little bit. So it'll be good. But Oh, and I don't know. Fine. I haven't seen uh, Tori. Oh, right. Yes. In a while. And I, I wanted to reach out to her that um, I did get her text message. Okay. And uh, same with, with Andrea. I don't know. If she's on here. I, I, I just wanted to apologize I do see your text messages and I do see your emails. I apologize if I haven't answered. Uh, Tori, I have a really bad habit of writing a message and then I forget to hit send. I would like to do the live with them too. And well, I think it was nice. with Letty. Yeah. And was with it Letty Tori. and Tori. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I can't, the last one was on a Thursday and I can't do it on Thursdays because Tim has live. his lives. Yeah. So if you guys are still wanting to do the live, I would, I'd want to do it. Yeah. 
and uh what so yeah we got we got the meat yeah. guys we're, we're gonna have those we're gonna do some more round tables coming up but i also have james wesley rawls i'm going to be interviewing him i believe it's on tuesday the author of patriots which will be kind of cool one of one of the original the originators of prepper porn and one of the early adopters of the internet forum technology for uh preparedness i'm really excited but it's going to be pre-recorded he doesn't do live interviews and that's fine so if you have questions for him send them along in the telegram group before or tuesday before tuesday yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i will i will uh, add them along i can't wait it's gonna be a great interview and uh we'll go uh letty says it's still in the works baby and letty yeah. says buy your tickets to srf and you get to meet uh this beautiful celebrity <laughs> here um Mrs. And I, I'm man. doing a panel, I think, with yeah, Nicole. Yeah, it's supposed to be a on SR at SR. Yeah, some yeah. sort of female in entrepreneurship roundtable panel, something. So yeah, with Nicole, Nicole and... and someone else. I don't know okay. who else. Yeah. I'll find out for you. So, yeah. with that, guys, we appreciate you. It was a great Saturday night, and mm -hmm. as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.